Hello everyone and welcome to one of our new live streams. Today we're going to be going over portfolio review and I'm really happy to see you guys here on the chat. Hello uh, Lira Mel, hello Daniel Sarn of course, we got Dark Destiny, Evil Fry and a lot others right here on the chat. Dark Destiny, thanks for the follow my friend. And uh, yeah, today, well before we start just a quick announcement, we just released a new course. It's our newest premium course, it's the third premium course we've released so far, which is our introduction to Maya. We're going to be talking a lot about Maya this time around, or at least about 3D, of course, during the portfolio review. And I think this course, if you want to get into the 3D world, it's a great way to start your journey. So yeah, that's it. The course is available. You can check the trailer in the YouTube and uh, we're going to be sharing the link. Oh, there you go. The link is right there on the comments as well. So once we've um, covered this, let's just jump straight into our portfolio review. And today we're going to start with Invictus 19. Let's take a look. Cool, so this is, I use Ananth, and uh, we're gonna be taking a look at this revolver, it seems. It says right here on the message, I recently made my portfolio and uploaded some of my best works in it. I don't have much at the moment, but I'm constantly making things to be uploaded next in the portfolio. Okay, let's take a look at the whole portfolio. I always like to see the whole portfolio first, and uh, yeah, we only have two objects right now. We got this stone, this rock right here, and the revolver. Let's take a quick look at the rock. The rock looks good um, for this sort of like stylized game or environment. I think it's fine. However, one thing that I do notice is that the edges are not very well defined. So this thing right here, this element that you're seeing, this is something that should be baked into the into the actual stone itself. And it's a very common mistake when we are doing like a dynamesh and things like that inside of Seabrush. Objects, especially rocks in the real world, they don't break like this, okay? So, so you're not going to have this super like clean, smooth break on the line. You're usually going to have a, a crack going over there, a fracture of the, of the actual stone. So when you're sculpting, I don't see the high poly right here, but when you're sculpting, try to, to not combine all of the objects into a single mesh. I know it's very tempting when we're working with a dynamesh, but it's, it's important not to do it because then we get this sort of like smooth effect and, um, and that's not how things naturally occur. The low poly, which is what you have right here, this one will indeed be a single poly mesh. And your your decimation or your um, retopology here, sorry. Oh my God. Uh, your retopology here is actually looking quite nice. Uh, the textures are looking nice as well, but it's the high poly, this like separation of the elements that's hurting you a little bit. Thank you, back boy. Thank you. Thank you. I, I get allergies at this time of the year. It's, it's horrible. It lasts for like September, October, and November. I, I hate it. So that's the one. Now, um, one one advice that I always give, and Anand, you're gonna be the first one to get it today. I, I mentioned this quite uh, frequently, is don't include something in your portfolio that can be done relatively quickly, right? So this to me looks like an exercise um, to understand like the game process and stuff like like that. So I I don't recommend having this because it's a very it's a relatively simple asset so so you're not gonna impress anyone if, if you know what i mean so it's not gonna be something that's super super impressive every now and then and, and if you check my portfolio i do have certain assets that are relatively simple but um again i, I would recommend not including it if it's not necessary you can share this on, on like facebook linkedin the instagram uh stuff like that on socials but here in your portfolio you want to have only the very best elements now let's go to the gun because this gun looks really nice. So what what I love about this uh, first thing I'm seeing is the presentation, right? Uh, I, I always remember the. Do you guys remember the Mega Mind uh, movie? Uh, this like guy with the big blue head, and and he was like, what What's the difference between a hero and a superhero, or a villain and a supervillain? It was like presentation, right? So that's the that's the thing that you guys should always keep in mind when doing 3D work. Presentation is super super important, and it's not the same to just have a render like this, which is very like classical, very traditional, to have a render like this because with this render with this little box right here you're already telling a story there's already other elements involved in this um in this scene that tells me that there's more to it than just a simple model so you are are telling a story and that's very important now a couple of things here i feel like the metal edge where it's a little bit too prominent in certain areas like this right here it, it, it's it's barely noticeable you did a good job like not overdoing it but it's a little bit noticeable everywhere and remember that i hate when the metal edge where is everywhere so we should always try to to just keep it on the on the important areas i love the bullets right here look at the variation that we have on the materials very dark gold and very light gold this is all light by the way this is all render and it's a really really good thing 
Now, I'm not sure if you added like a dust filter on top of everything. It kind of feels like it because there's those like there, there are these little like specks of dust everywhere. I would probably tone those down a little bit because it's 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 just too much. Um, this is a good one as well. Yeah, like all of these renders are really, really, really freaking good, man. Like this is an excellent, excellent portfolio piece for a prop artist. Now, here's one important thing. Look at this, guys. Can you see what he did right here? He's simplifying the topology, but it's it's um, being kept in a in a sort of like um, high poly or sorry, low poly sort of effect. I'm gonna show you real quick, and this is one of the things that I want to do nowadays or nowadays, like in the in the new like versions of the portfolio review. Uh, Nation Nightmare, welcome, my friend. Um, I wanna I wanna do some examples as well. I might not be able to to explain in every single piece that you guys share, but every now and then, like this piece right here, I think it's it's worth it. So whenever we have a circular object and we wanna optimize it for game borders are always complicated because the more loops we have the smoother the border is going to be but the higher the poly count is going to be as well so there's a very very common um like optimization technique that we can use to keep our poly count low and keep our elements a little bit high in regards to um the curvature and the and the like cleanliness of it uh maya is gonna crash um i don't know why this maya 2024 has this bug where the it just crashes after the first time you started oh it didn't okay so imagine we're doing again that piece right there i'm gonna use a torus so i'm gonna go here and pipe there we go so this is a 20-sided pipe which as you can see if i press number seven on my on my uh, keyboard we get the very like sharp line on the borders the only way to make a circular or curvature or curved like object look smoother is by adding more divisions. There's no other way. But the problem is if I go, let's say, to 40 subdivisions, yes, it's going to look very, very smooth or a lot smoother, but we're also going to get a lot of extra polygons in the inside. So one of the things that you can do is you can select every other edge on the inside of the object. Okay. You select every other object. In this case, it's 20 of them. And you can see right now my poly count, we have 320 triangles. And when I collapse those elements, we get this shape right here that goes all the way down to 280. So I just reduced 40 triangles from my um, element, from my poly count. And that allows me to have a, a way, way cleaner object. And even here, if you need to, you could collapse like a couple more. Like it's not going to look super clean on the inside. But if it's a flat surface on the inside, you might not even notice. So, like, just randomly grabbing all of those. If we really needed to subdivide, we could have this, like a, like a super hexagonal shape on the inside with a super smooth surface on the outside. And again, since this is completely flat, there's no problem. We're not going to have anything. Toasted3D, welcome, my friend, to the chat. Welcome, welcome. So, yeah, this is a, a very, very, like, good way in which you can generate a, a smoother mesh on the curvature, on the curvatures where it matters, Okay. So, so keep that in mind and add for, for this sort of things. Again, that's the trigger. It's a small element, so you might not even need it, but it's just something that's cool to have. Amazing reference board. That's great. Okay, cool. Yep, the decimation looks good. The only thing I think we're missing is how many polygons we have, because I don't see a poly count anywhere. So it would be just nice to add that number on one of the renders. I can see that it's a 4K texture, which is fine, but I don't see the amount of polygons, and it will be important to see it. Uh, thumbs on, Fernando. Welcome, my friend, and thanks for the follow. So, yeah, that's it, man. Good good job, Anon. Uh, that's that's really, really nice. Let's go to the next one. Saki Raseke. Let's see. Saki Raseke says, I'm a self-thought 3D general generalist artist. I mostly make environment, and I use Blender, and my interest is in BFX, CGI, realism, environment, and anything that gets me excited. Okay, cool. So, first things first, there's a lot of pieces, which is good, but could also be uh, hurtful, depending on the quality of those pieces. Most of the pieces that I'm seeing right here are really good. I like it. So, for instance, of course, this is usually the most recent piece that you have in your portfolio is going to be the, the best one, right? So this one's good. It's a, it's a nice prop. It's a nice asset. I do feel like the materials are a little bit glossy, like very new, which, well, actually, it, it's weird because the, the metal looks a little bit tarnished, a little bit old, and then the wood looks very new. So I would probably reduce or increase the roughness on the, on the wood just a little bit. But this is a nice render, nice detail on the textures. The next thing that we will be needing are some um, some wireframe renders. I know we have this Sketchfab thing right here, which should allow us to see the wireframe. But I'm a little bit scared of seeing like too many polygons. Let's see what we get here. 
What's up, my friend? Not much, man. Just uh, going through some portfolios and helping you out. To make sure you get the best possible results. So this one's nice again. It looks it looks cool. Let's take a look at the um, wireframe first. Okay, yeah, this would definitely be like it's like a meat poly because it's not perfectly low poly. You have some very low poly elements. Careful here. These are angons or these are uh, booleans. Booleans are not bad, but you should always try to find a way to clean them up a little bit if possible. Again, they're not going to really kill you, but at least triangulate the faces because just seeing gangons, it's um, it's complicated uh, for some surfers. Like if you if you brought this into Seabrush to add some scratches or something, they was just, this was just um, it would just crash. Now, look at this. This is ridiculous. You don't need this. Right, like look at the just look at the density of the lines on the and the disc right here. That's something that you very easily solve with a bump map or a normal map because it's a surface that's so flat that you're not gonna be seeing the uh, the actual geometry unless you're gonna be doing a super close up like right here. But even then, like I, I've held some of these discs like physically, right, and and you don't see the groups as prominent as what you have right here. And again, the amount of polygons is just way, way, way too much. But the color itself is really nice. I, I like the, the details that you added here. Um, just a quick, um, this is a very, very specific detail, but I mentioned this quite a bit. Whenever you're doing woodworking or whenever you're doing something made out of wood, usually the grain of the wood is going to go in the long direction of the object. So you can see that the texture on the, on the pillars right here is going sideways. That makes it very easy to break. Okay. That's why when you, if you've ever taken like a karate class and they give you the board so that you can kick it, you always like the board, the, the fibers of the wood are always going to be this way so that they easily break because if they give you the wood like this if the cut is like this it's going to be very very difficult and you're going to get splinters and you could get hurt so whenever they're breaking boards they always have the the grain of the wood going in the like vertical direction so that um the wood is weaker on that direction in this case we actually need it to be the other way around weaker on or, or actually stronger on the up and down axis but uh, yeah, this is a good man, a good one, man. Now I do see a lot of exercises on your uh, on your stuff right here. It seems to me like you have a really good understanding of light, which is great. Like this one right here, even though it's a very simple render, you've managed to create a very nice like little image. This is one of the, the ones that I would say, yeah, it's, it's okay. It can be in your portfolio. It's a simple one. It's something that someone should be able to do in like a day, but it's a good one, right? Like it looks very, very nice. So I would I would keep it. Um, but there's others that mm, you probably don't want, like this one right here. It's just a, like, yeah, like even the wireframe we see right here, it's just a very, very, very simple uh, image. So this is better suited for things like Facebook, Instagram, and things like that, where you just want to get some exposure and, and to, to tell people what you, what you know or what you do. This one's really cool. Nice. Yeah, again, it's a simple one, but again, the presentation on this top one, the materials and the render, really good, man really really good you have a good eye for uh for light now this one is fun but again it's simple like a lot of this uh that you're sharing right now are quite simple so i would just be careful not to do a lot of simple things you could keep maybe another like uh like tab over here said like a uh, i don't know social work or something like that because they are very simple they're very they're very nice the texture and the light that you're doing on this guys are it's it's quite nice but it's a simple exercise that any like 3d modeler should be able to do so you're not really presenting anything out of the ordinary or extraordinary right um like this one right here this cute copter let's see some close-ups it, it looks nice it's it's not a bad model but uh we just see this one shot so we need to see a little bit more and for instance this guy's right here this one's really cool there's a like gas station pump you have this other radio what i would love to see on this ones is the um textures we need to see the textures okay if you can texture this guys they, they would be way way more uh powerful powerful results again careful with this angles right here it's not that much of um What's the word? It's not bad, that much of, a, of an issue to have them on flat areas, but it's always a good idea to triangulate. Now, the reason why I haven't clicked on the robot right here, on this cute robot, is because I've seen this concept before. So I'm not sure if it's exactly that concept, but I've seen very, very similar robots. Whenever I look for like cute robot, um, cute robot concept and stuff like that, I, I get like very, very similar results. But it's a cute one. Yeah, this is fine. Again, I, I don't see UVs. I see just like clean materials. Uh, probably, what's it? Is, is it Blender? Yeah, it's Blender. So it's just clean materials from Blender, which is perfectly fine. Uh, it's a little bit dense. Again, one of the things that you might get every now and then 
is you will get certain studios or certain workflows that tell you that you should always have a uniform distribution on the amount of, of faces that you have. So for instance, we have a very dense arm right here, and then we have a very low poly like a rib cage over here. And I'm not sure why, maybe you applied the, the smooth modifier to this one and not to this one. So just make up your mind right there and either smooth everything so you have super high topology on everything or keep everything in low poly and just add the the smooth modifier it's a nice exercise for beginners yeah robots are really really good like whenever i teach my my intro to maya class in in universities i the the final exam is usually to to model a robot uh you pick the concept and then you just you just model it so yeah i think again my friend you have a really good portfolio really good pieces it seems to me that you ah uh, sorry <laughs> oh, okay. It seems to me that you have a really good understanding of the 3D pipeline, which is great. However, it's very important to showcase it with more complex pieces because anyone can do this. For instance, like anyone should be able to just model a couple of planes, a couple of spheres, and then just render this nicely into water droplets. It's not that complicated, right? So, so it's important to do more like this guy right here, like the gramophone. Careful with the environments. I did notice something in your environments. Your environments tend to be a little bit empty or or i'm not gonna say boring but um usually environments like this you're gonna have other things such as a rug uh some like a finish here on the on the border of the of the lights like like something because right now it just looks very basic i would say and you can see it here on the on the building like right it's just blocks everywhere um so if you want to do environments you need to fill them up with something a little bit more interesting same with this one this is just blocks this is just primitives and polygons it that they look nice but you need to see some some more interesting pillars and air ducts and uh, doors and i don't know handles things like that too yeah exactly that that creep that's exactly you need to tell a story with this sort of environments and right now they just seem like modeling and, and texturing exercises i would say this one's a little bit better but i i've seen other classrooms and again it, it looks very empty and uh, and i know you can tell a story because you have some other pieces that are really good like the heart and and um and the little uh, like a gramophone over here so it's just a matter of, of spending more time environments definitely need way way more time because you need to to make it more interesting what happened there who occupied the, exactly yeah it's just about asking questions right like why is it why do we have two levels well, someone probably lives or sleeps up there. Well, if they sleep up there, what are we going to see? Maybe an alarm clock or maybe like some sheets like hanging from here or like a pillow on the floor. Like there's a lot of things that you can think about and usually asking questions, asking yourself, like, why are we like, why do things look this way is the, is the way to do it. So, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it for you, Saki. Hopefully that helps. Let's go with the next one. We now go with Pratjush uh, Gupta. Take a look. Says, I make 3D props and characters, retopologize, unwrap, and texture them. Okay, we got a modeler here. Cool. So I see six characters and one prop, and you are giving your prop the most um, like prominence because it's on your on your like main page. I don't like the new art station thing, by the way. They changed this like a, like a week ago, right, Sarn? And it's horrible. Well, I don't like it. It's, uh, it's very weird. Uh, I prefer the old one. But anyway, so fan art, as I've, as I've said, is always a good thing. It's um, it's very it's very easy for fan art to be recognizable and people will see what you like. It's very easy to understand. However, the the risk with doing a fan art is that you need to be really, really good at doing the fan art. Otherwise, people are going to be very like critical about it. So, for instance, this is spider one. Anyone can tell this is a spider one, but texturing wise, modeling wise, it's not the best spider one that I've seen. And uh, we can very easily like test that by just looking for spider one. And if we look for a close up of her mask, you're going to see that usually her mask it's a lot cleaner, right? Like we don't have those like latex, uh, like pores that you were adding. So, so we need to be very careful on how we, on how we model certain elements. I mean, it's not wrong to have this, but even the shape of the face, it depends on which spider one you're using, but it's usually sharper. It has like a very like sharp and nice uh, features over there. I've, I've wanted to do a spider one fanner for a long time. I'm, um, I, I, I'm gonna sound very, very well, not very old, but I, I remember seeing Spider Gwen and Mighty Thor and a lot of like the female versions of, of characters um, in the comics before they started appearing in series and stuff. And, and I always thought they were a very, very cool idea. So you again, you gotta be very careful with fan arts because 
they're like a double-edged sword. You need to be, you need to make them really, really nice so that people don't criticize them as much. Um, this one is like a little explorer. Never, this will be my advice to you, Pradyush, never start your portfolio with not the best piece. So this is your best shot. Like the render element is the best shot for your character. And starting with the clay render, it's not a good idea, okay? Because people might not click on it. If, if they just see a clay render on your portfolio and they see other colored effects, they might just skip that or ignore it. But now that they click on it and I see that you actually did the materials and textures, hey, well, that's what we're looking for. So this should be the one that's on the front. Now, there's a very important thing that you're a uh, very common mistake that you're making here with this character. Oh. And that's a gesture. You guys know what gesture is? I'm gonna give an, an extra point to whoever writes what a gesture is in the chat. What is a gesture? Well, I copy this one right here. There we go. Anyone? Do we got po it, it has to do with the poses, Evil Fright. It has to do with the poses, but it's not the, the poses themselves. That's right, Kingsuit, you got it. It's the flow and interconnection of shapes, the movement of the body. Yeah, the flow. I, I usually refer to it as, as the flow of the body. So the problem when we're modeling, especially when we're modeling through the... Oh, wait a second. My tablet is... There we go. Oh, what is happening? It's backwards. There we go. So when we're modeling, we tend to fit, focus on like the front view and, and the side view and things like that. And it's fine, but we also need to be very careful on not to kill the gesture. The human body usually has the, the face, okay, the rib cage, and the pelvis. And there's a play, a flow between all of this thanks to the, to the spine that we have. It's kind of like an S-curve. We always see this. So as you can see right now, we're losing that. This is just a completely straight gesture and that makes the character look very stiff. And you can see that they did not do that here on the, on the concept art. On the concept art, we got the character, right? That's the head. This is the rib cage, and this is the pelvis, and he's got a very, very intense curvature going like this. So we need to capture that in the pose of the character that we're doing. Otherwise, we just lose a lot of information. Now, one thing that you did miss here, and it's a big miss, I would say, is the backpack. The backpack is half of the composition, it's half of the character. So you decided not to add the backpack actually takes away from the character because he looks very empty. Right? He's missing his pipe, he's missing all of the props right here, the shovel. So there's a lot of things that we need to, to work around that because otherwise things are going to look a little bit weird. Here's another thing, and this is this is the kind of stuff that, that recruiters are going to be looking at. Can you see this? Oh, let me make the brush a little bit smaller. Can you see that? What's that? That's the cords of the shoes. Where are they? There's no cords. We need to have the cords right here, even if it's just overlapping right there. Where are the socks? We need the socks on the character as well. The concept has socks, you need to add socks. Otherwise, things are not being done the way they should be. Look at the shape of the of the foot, okay? If you look at the shape of the foot, you're gonna know this, that if we had a top view of the foot, it would be something like this. We got the heel, then we got a very narrow kind of like bridge of the foot, and then kind of like a clown shoe like this, right? It's very stylish, this character is very stylish. I actually like this one. Maybe, maybe we'll do a tutorial about that one. <laughs> a premium course about stylized characters and props. That would be fun. This is a very fun concept. So if this is the, the shape of the shoe, you need to make sure that your shoe also looks like that. Okay? So all of those kind of like details are what recruiters and portfolio reviewers are going to be looking at to make sure that you're nailing all of the elements that you have on the element. Here's another one. Look at the size of the button right here. Okay? And compare it to the size of the button that you added. It's not right. We need to add big buttons. Okay, so all of that stuff, all of those elements are the elements that you need to be very careful about when creating characters and especially when following a concept, because that's the kind of stuff that we're going to be like uh, going for. Give me just one second. The computer seems to have. Uh... Photoshop. There we go. There we go. OK, cool. let's continue with your with your portfolio. I don't want to I don't want to like stop on this piece too much. What's going on? My mouse going crazy or is it a tablet? I'm gonna disconnect the tablet. Then it was the tablet. Okay, so moving on to some of the other characters. Um we got this witch. 
but again it's good I, I see where you're going it's definitely low poly which is fine for for certain type of uh of elements definitely need to work a little bit more on the anatomy and uh, mainly on the props you need to pay a little bit more attention to the props uh, I know you say here that this is for a mobile game, but even in mobile games, you need to 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 have a lot of attention to detail to make sure that every single thing that you do looks as, as best as you can. You have this little goblin. This is great. This is a really, really clean little character right here. I would love to rig this one. This is an, a relatively easy one to rig, and, and it's a fun one. I think this one definitely shows your, your improvement. Again, I know this is probably for like a mobile game. Oh, it's rigged already. Cool. Textures look fine. Yeah, this is a great, great piece. A simple one, but great. So what you need to do is you need to apply those things that you did with this one. Even the presentation. I think this one has the strongest presentation by far. And you need to apply that to other characters as well. This one looks fun. It's kind of like a like a Russian uh, like general or something. Yeah, that's fine. I, I can see you have the process uh, like down, my friend. It's just now we need to work on the quality of the things that you're doing. You already know the technical or the technicalities of it. Now it's time to work on the quality. This one looks a little bit lumpy. The, the edges don't look as sharp as what we saw with the revolver on the last portfolio. It's not bad, but we can definitely improve on the sharpness of some of those elements. Um, a lot of use uh, space on the map. On which one? On the character? Let's see. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, we can definitely improve the UV maps. You're, you're right. Are we getting some, uh, <clears throat> some lag? <clears throat> it should be solved by now. Thanks, Pau. So, <clears throat> ah, I'm losing my voice right now. So, yeah, this is good, my friend. Again, you have cool pieces. I can definitely see that you're going for the character style and, and stylized characters. Keep pushing that if you want. We do have the the uh, ZBrush uh, stylized character creation, which is a, a very cool uh, course where we go over a whole character with a lot of props as well. You might want to, you want to, <laughs> you had too much voice acting, right? You might want to check that one out as well on our, on our Udemy page. But uh, yeah, that's cool, man. Let's move on to the next one. We got with uh, Tosh Arasan. Yeah, I also love stylized, to be honest. Tosh, okay. Tosh has been... Um, he's been submitting a lot for the past couple of uh, reviews, which is great. That's actually the best thing you can do. Like, as long as you can keep improving your portfolio, that's that's great. Are you finished with the this one? I think you're finished, right? At least the current version. This one's really good, man. I love this one. Really, really, really good. Yeah, you did a great job on this one. The likeness, I mean, it's not Hugh Jackman, which is fine. If you're going more like comic style oriented, that's great. The the cloth and everything, it looks really, really, really clean. The only thing I would suggest you add to this piece are some wireframe renders so that we can make sure that everything is like uh, animation ready or, or, or proper topology. Uh, but that one's really, really nice. Optimus Prime, I've never done a robot so complex like this. I, I don't like uh, robots like, like this, to be honest. It's, it's not my style, but this one's really good. I can see some interesting solutions there on the topology side of things. And uh, yeah, whenever you're doing robots like this, it's very common to have a huge, 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 huge amount of poly count. So this one looks good. The clay render there looks good. And I can see you're doing some uh, textures. There you go. That looks nice. A little bit bumpy in certain areas, but but it's it's cool. Bala1555. Thanks for the follow, man. Welcome. Welcome to the, the stream. Yeah, that one's good. The Hell Knight. I, I uh, last time we were reviewing uh, Rasan's uh, portfolio, I told him that um, it was a very good one, and to just like work the back of it a little bit more. This looks great. I would just suggest or recommend that you do a clay render inside of Arnold. I know you know how to do clay renders, even if it's just um, even if it's just um, decimated. We got Benidu Dudu. Benidu Dudu. <laughs> Thanks for the follow, man. That's a cool name. And this one, the panic attack. Yeah. Yeah, that's it, man. You got a great portfolio. So keep it going. Keep it push. Keep, keep pushing it. And uh, we need a couple more pieces. Because right now, I would say you have four pieces. You got the shotgun, the alien, the Optimus Prime. This counts pretty much as one. And the wall brain, which are really good pieces. I would try to get to seven pieces. I would say seven is like a really good number for a, a portfolio, for a production ready portfolio. Okay, let's go with Oshan Devinda. 
and uh, he's got a message that says, hey, here's my portfolio. I learned and generalized on most of 3D subject areas. However, two months ago, I decided to specialize myself with character art. As a first step, I started creating collectibles and statues. That's great. I like to create game characters. However, since it involves a longer workflow, I decided to master sculpting for some time until I feel comfortable. This is my two months progress. Each character took one week to create. Besides to see your opinions as a portfolio review, I would be very thankful to know what areas should I improve and learn more about. Thanks for the amazing courses and knowledge you share. I learned a lot from you. Cheers. Let's go. So this is Oshan Devinda. Okay, cool. So we can see four characters right here. We got a modern mage figure, a Kratos, Raven from DC, and this one kind of reminds me of uh, Star-Lord. So oh, give me just one second. Okay, so the figures are fine. Uh, again, we gotta keep. Uh, uh, I would suggest. Let's copy this. I would suggest always, always thinking about the again the gesture. Gesture is one of those things that's super, super important. Oh, it's Photoshop. Well, that's like freaking out. Give me one second. Let's kill Photoshop. Try 2024. Oh yeah, we don't have a command for Discord. That would be cool. I'm not sure how to to add that, but we'll work on that. And control B. There we go. So when we have a character like this, and especially figures, I'm I'm a huge like figures guys as well. I don't have as many figures, but I like 3D printing like uh, D and D miniatures. You should always try to push the the like the um, the effects a little bit more. So as you can see right now, this part right here looks very very stiff on the character. So if we grab this thing and we just push it a little bit more, kind of like in this this U shape, the arms as well, like this arm, we could have like pushed it back a little bit. And then this arm, like maybe like have it a little bit higher. Same with the legs. Like there's a lot of things that you can do to modify the pose and, and give it a little bit more movement, more intensity uh, uh, per se. So yeah, the, this, is a, this is a good one. Now in regards to sculpting, cloth definitely needs some work. Uh, I feel like anatomy and proportions are looking good. We're going to see that in the faces in the next couple of pieces. But the cloth definitely looks lumpy. It, it looks a little bit weird. I'm actually working, like, literally, I, I started working on the new course, which is going to be a, a game pipeline course for Marvel's Designer, Zebra, Substance Painter, Maya, a little bit of everything. We're going to be doing a very cool character. I'm not sure if we can show the character. I, I think I'll wait before we show the character. It's a very cool one. So, yeah, cloth is definitely one of those things that's a little bit tricky. And uh, Seabrush does have some very cool uh, cloth tools, like the dynamics. Make use of those. Make use of those tools to, to generate some more interesting wrinkles. Um, here, the anatomy, I can't really appreciate it. I would need a close-up of the face. It doesn't look bad, but we definitely need a little bit more definition. It looks very simple. If you're going to print it at a small scale, like D&D scale, it's fine. But if you're going to be doing a, a big one, it's it's definitely going to be... Uh, you're definitely going to need a little bit more detail and and, uh, and precision on the, on the forms of the face. When is it going to be released? The new video game pipeline course. That's one that I'm trying to release it by mid November. So probably in like a month. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be divided into into sections. So the first section is gonna be marble designer. It's gonna be pretty. Much, it's mainly a marble designer course, but I want to show you how to take the marble designer thing into other elements. So we're gonna be working with the base mesh. We're gonna dress the base mesh, and then we're gonna take all the cloth into ZBrush, add more details, bring it into Maya, prepare with retopology and everything, UBs, substance with textures, and then we're just gonna present it probably in Unreal Engine since it's uh, free. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, we just released the, the Maya course uh, like two days ago, <laughs> so so there's still a little bit of uh, time before the new one, but uh, it's going to release soon. See, the Kratos again, portraits are fine, like busts like this are fine, but you need to spend more time on this. I would definitely take this one out. It's not, I, would, I wouldn't say it's finished, to be honest. It, it definitely needs a little bit more work. Um, there's a couple of books, great books, the Anatomy for Sculptures and the Face for Sculptures, I think. Those are great tools to, to really dig in into the form of the characters, but I do feel like this Kratos is uh, a little bit unfinished. And then this Raven looks way better. Like the face on her on her character looks a lot nicer. But again, on the clock, on the cloak, and the, and like the the spandex that she has right here, this like swimsuit or something, uh, it, the the wrinkles they're not looking as clean. So we definitely need to improve a little bit on the cloth. I would recommend if you can to buy a couple of uh, like cloth brushes. There's people that sell like. Um, like cloth brushes with uh, alphas and like some some cool alphas and stuff, and that could really really help you get a, a nicer effect. 
Uh, Super Monkey 12, what's up, my friend? Welcome to the chat. Uh, Nat Cream is asking, for 3D print portfolio, I guess intended size and print types are important. Yes, and if you can get a 3D printer and show that your 3D print works, that's even better. Like, I have mine right here. Give me one second. Let's see. I need to disable a couple of things over here. Uh, camera. There we go. So this was uh, a course that I did for 3D printing uh, like two years ago or something. And I 3D print, like I showed the whole process of the 3D print uh, um, production like line, uh, how to clean the print, how to glue the parts together, create the cut lines and everything. Uh, we're probably going to be doing a 3D printing course as well uh, early next year because uh, it's very, very fun. And it's important that it prints. Like if you design something in Seabrush and it doesn't print, then you're you're missing one of the points, right? You're You're failing there. Very, very important to to do that. There we go. What's this? Let's go back to the stream. Perfect. So, yeah, this is good stuff, man. I would definitely practice more anatomy, especially like male anatomy. I'm not seeing a lot of male anatomy, so uh, a full male character would definitely help your portfolio as well. Let's now go with uh, Lothus Ellen. Let's take a look. It says, hi there, I'm an environment artist, a teacher, and a lover of games. It's, Yay, another teacher. Cool, from Brazil. Since I was young, I love it and have been part of all my life. And I'm on work with it, and this game is hard, but I'm leveling every day. And I'm here to share with you all my works and progress. Let's take a look. I'm going to look for all. So I can see some material works. Usually materials, I recommend either bundling them up in a single one, just so they don't occupy as much space. But in this case, you don't have too many. I see one, two, three, four, so that's fine. Something like this. I, I love this post right here because you can appreciate each one. This is definitely Substance Designer, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Really nice styles, nice displacement. I'll probably bevel these guys a little bit on the on the borders because the, the edge looks a little bit jaggedy. Uh, this looks very nice. I like this rock. Marvelous Design is one of those softwares that I, I know the very basics of. Like, I've done, like, a brick texture and a wood texture and things like that. But you can do some amazing, amazing things. It just requires a lot of time. So, that's cool. This one, I've seen this one before. I've seen this concept art before. It's really nice. And you, I think you nailed the cartoon style of it. Even with the edge wear, like, this cartoon edge wear that looks very, very nice. Yeah, this is great. This is very nice. My only advice would be that, oh, there we go, wireframe. Yeah, this is subdivision modeling. So this would be for something like a commercial or like a movie or something, which is fine. Um, this light looks a little bit too yellow for my, my particular taste. I, I love using temperature on my lights, but this one does look a little bit too yellow. And if you're trying to present this like this, I would go a little bit more, more neutral. But that's just like a neat picky thing, like really no, no, no need to change it. Let's look at the environments. Nice, nice. Like an abandoned sort of like school or something. It's very overgrown. Okay. Uh, when did, Okay, you did this 3D years ago. Yeah, I was going to say, when did you did this? Because it does look a little bit different from your more recent effects. This one looks a little bit nicer. Like even the presentation, like the fog and the light looks a little bit more cinematic. Um, it looks cartoonish. I kind of feel like it's like a, it could be from like a remaster of uh, Team Fortress or something like that. I would add more stuff. I think it does look a little bit empty, just like some signs, maybe some uh, like dirt or bags or something, just to break up the, the composition a little bit because everything looks very mechanical, very hard surfacey. And if we add some more organic things, I think that could balance the, the composition out. Like especially with these things, right? Like this is supposed to be like a like a repair garage, and I've seen that there's always like a console with like cranks and levers and things like that to push this thing up and down and right now it just looks like it's there we don't see any cables we don't see any oil leaking we don't see anything and so that that looks a little bit weird also careful with your textures over here you're a texture guy you know that you you have very cool textures so you gotta be very careful in every single point you can see that the pillars here there's a little bit of an, like an overlap on the bricks and then this guy right here that's also like a weird like sort of like cut there on the brick it, it's noticeable so so you want to be careful uh on there Lights are hanging in the cables. Yeah, 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 exactly. We, we could see like some cables, like a, maybe a window, something, something to just make this environment a little bit more interesting. But the last one, this one looks nice. Okay, it looked nice on the thumbnail here. I feel like the illumination is killing us a little bit. I'm not sure what engine you're using. It says Unreal Engine, which is a little bit concerning because Unreal Engine has Lumen nowadays. 
Okay, this was two years ago, so probably we didn't have Lumen back then. So yeah, I would probably revisit this project because you do have a good like uh like construction of all of the stones and the and the trees and everything, but the illumination is just killing you, man. Like this is such a flat illumination, it, it's just not uh it's not really like letting us see cool things from the environment. So I'm sure you can make this look way, way better by just giving it another pass. And that's one of the best advices that I can give you guys in regards to portfolio. You don't need to do a new project every single time. You can go back and revisit an old project and just like make it better i've done that several times and you just update it and that's it because we don't sometimes especially when you're already working or when you're in production you don't have as much time to just go back and, and do everything again so being able to just reutilize or redo something is, is very cool this is a great material man looks very very freaking fun this is amazing i love this one it's really 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 cool yeah, so my advice, if you want to be a material artist, which is a very like niche sort of like pick, not a lot of people go that way, then make sure you have a lot of materials in here. If you're going to be a more like an environment artist and you want to do a little bit of everything, then we need more environment pieces because right now the three that we have, they they, they need a little bit more help, okay? Um, if you can, like what I was mentioning, like this is a good sculpt. It's not bad. If you refine it just a little bit, sharpen some of the elements a little bit more, retopologize, texture, hand paint or whatever, you're going to have another piece. So there's again, there's no need to do everything from scratch. You can just reutilize what you have. Uh, it says, thanks for the amazing feedback. Abe will definitely improve. Yeah, you're welcome, man. And, and that's the thing. Like, I know sometimes I'm, I don't consider myself to be super harsh on the portfolios. I've had like super harsh portfolios, like teachers telling you, you suck. You should pick another career. Like, this is not for years. Like, damn. And I understand that that sometimes works for some people. Like, it really motivates them to be better. But I feel like it just destroys the, the motivation for a lot of other people. So I try to be uh, I try to be more honest and just tell you, hey, this is not good. You should remove it. You should change it. But there's no need to be a dick right <laughs> let's go with the freeman your turn my friend guzman facundo what's up man from cordova argentina okay yeah no worries man i understand why you were mentioning here that you um i understand how you feel a little bit nervous it's fine I can see that you're a beginner artist and you even say it here on your on your um portfolio and i never judge anyone's work like with the same sort of like stick as they say uh in mexico we say medir con la misma vara we don't measure everyone with the same skill level because everyone is um everyone is uh, at a different part of their journey and you should always compete with yourself of course you should look at the industry and see what others are doing but as long as you're improving every day which is our motto right always learning always improving as long as you're doing that you're moving in the right direction so what i can see this is a couple of exercises right like this is a, a very simple scythe and then we got like this bridge a castle we got the die looks very cool the shotgun i i really like that you were able to to finish this shotgun so you did the whole model and then you added some textures and even this render this render looks very nice if i didn't see this like blockouts that are uh, relatively simple i would think that this is a, a game asset so so the cool thing and this is what you should be doing right now you i feel a feel i truly believe that you're following the right path right now you should feel comfortable with the pipeline you should understand the ins and outs of modeling of texturing of rendering and one once you understand the whole process, that's when we start polishing and polishing and polishing. I can see here that you're using 3D Studio Max. I wish I could use or I knew how to use it so that I could give you a couple more tips. Unfortunately, that's one of the softwares that I do not use. But my advice is we need to start adding a little bit more complexity to our models. So for instance, this first aid kit, this is a great, great model. First aid kit concept. This is the kind of props that every single game is going to have, like especially like sci-fi concept like game so look for a concept art of of this one or use ai to generate one for yourself i don't care and once you find something that looks cool it could be something as simple as this one right here right like it doesn't have to be a sci-fi this is like an antique like world war one or something world war two so just add more detail to the elements don't be afraid of bebbling things right because i can see that you have a nice form right here and you could really benefit from the bevel let me let me show you here real quick so Maya and, and, and 3D Studio Max, they're kind of like cousins, right? So, so they should work fairly similar. So for instance, I'm going to start with this cube right here. I'm going to grab the edges and I'm going to bevel them. I'm going to do just one segment and a small fraction. So we get that sort of like shape that we have. And then this face, I'm just going to like get it in a little bit. And once I have that, the whole shape, I'm just going to bevel the whole shape. And that's going to give me a very nice, like, soft uh, effect on the whole thing, right? Now, what I'm going to do here, because you did use uh, probably some booleans or something. 
here's here, here we can take a little bit of a look at, at what I was mentioning earlier about uh, like using using booleans smartly. So I'm gonna do a strong bevel right here. There we go. Let's bevel this thing. Let's position it right there. One, the other mesh booleans a difference, and there we go. Right. So this is what we have. Now I'm gonna delete history. And we got like the little like entrance right there. But doing that, it, it just looks weird. So I'm going to grab the whole edge right here. Unfortunately, since it's a Boolean, the edge flow might not flow like perfectly. So you might need to do a little bit of a, of a manual selection. Go. There we go. And then we bevel that. Just bevel. That's it. Look at that. That looks way, way nicer, way, way cleaner. And it's not really adding much poly count. Like the poly count that we have, look at that, 368 triangles. That's perfectly fine. So we can work with that. And this guys, again, I'm not too worried about because they're flat. They're flat areas. So even if we just go mesh and triangulate, we just do that. It looks very ugly, but this is perfectly game ready. And since this is not going to deform and it's not going to move, you're going to be able to, to use the shape of, well, a lot nicer. So here's again where, where um, like booleans, especially if you're doing high polys, booleans and things like that can really allow you to, to create like really interesting things. For instance, I'm going to grab this one. Let me let me duplicate this one. This one, this one, I'm going to say mesh, booleans, and then a difference again. And then we're going to grab this one. Go like right around there. Then again... History, mesh, booleans, difference, right? So look at that. We're creating a, a very like basic sort of like sci-fi thing. And if we just bevel the edges and then we do a retopo, and you don't even need to do a retopo since it's a hard surface thing and again, it's not going to deform. And you can create something that looks very nice relatively quickly. So don't be afraid to push your poly count higher because that's what's uh, holding you back right now. You're, you're going for a very low poly sort of style and you can definitely, definitely push this uh, like, like higher. Now, if you, um, <laughs> Blender Bros. Possessive. No. <laughs> if you want to learn a little bit about the workflows that I teach, I do have a Blender course and I have the new Maya course, which teaches all of those things that I was just mentioning about how to make things a little bit more um, complex and interesting. So yeah, keep the, keep up the good work, man. I want to see your portfolio in the next couple of months as you keep adding more and more stuff. Don't, don't stop because everyone was there. I was there. I'll do a video soon about like my earliest, uh, earliest like 3D jobs. It's always fun to talk about this. J Jeremy Reyes, or um, you're from Venezuela. Is it Jeremy? I'm not sure how they pronounce it over there. But uh, Jeremy, he's got a lot of guns, which is very, very cool. Yeah, you're welcome, man. You are welcome, the free man. So freelance 3D modeler specializing in hard surface. Yep, I can I can definitely see that. So it's interesting because you got some really cool stuff, and then you got some I would say relatively basic stuff for your portfolio. So all of this top row right here looks like a really nice effect. I would say texturing is one of the areas where you might need a little bit more um, time uh, or put a little bit more time into. Also modeling, we, we could definitely increase the, the details because the general forms are there. Like I can see the, like all of the pieces and the complexity of the elements, but still a relatively simple sort of like weapon right here. We need to see something a little bit more complex like this one right here. This looks a little bit better. Now, um, okay, there's the wireframe. If this is going to be for games, we definitely need to optimize a couple of things. I'm seeing some booleans over there as well that need to be cleaned up. It's not super heavy. Like I'm not seeing this as a, as a super... Yeah, 50,000 triangles for something as complex as this is expected, I would say. But we could definitely optimize if needed. Like uh, over here, right here, we can do a lot of collapse, as I showed you earlier in the video or in the in the stream, to um, to get something a little bit more more interesting. But yeah, I think I think render, well, rendering is is fine. So so I would definitely work on that. This one looks very nice. What did you use for this blender? Interesting. Yeah, this one is really, really good. Like the textures rescue the whole thing because I can see that this is very low poly, but this looks 
quite quite nice so so that's a good piece but again then you have some pieces that are a little bit questionable like this one right here right like the blade doesn't look bad but the pommel that's just a cylinder like a cylinder with a couple of bevels so we need to be very careful on how we um on how we present our portfolio this was one of a very good advice that was given to me by um, by a teacher when i was a student and she said your portfolio is not only a a a presentation letter of your skills it's also a presentation letter of your judgment okay so depending on what you put on your portfolio people are gonna question what kind of stuff you like how do you like to present things so if they see that you present a lot of unfinished pieces or a lot of like uh simple models they're gonna question whether you want to do that just to fill the portfolio or because you truly feel that that's a good piece and if you truly feel that that's a good piece when objectively it's not as good as some of your other pieces then again that puts into question your judgment and um it's it's, it's very important it's like when you go to a an interview right like a job interview and they start asking you like random questions like i don't know uh what do you expect to see yourself in two years or three years what is your favorite part of the process what does what would you call your weakness it's not because they really want to know the answer to those questions it's more of a, of a test to see how you respond how you behave how you are as a person right so if you're very nervous and you and you stutter and you give very big answers then that puts into question your 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 personality or i don't know so so that's the kind of stuff you need to be very very careful about when deciding how many pieces and which pieces you're going to be adding to your portfolio like this one right here is this really a piece that you want to have in your portfolio i'm not sure i mean i understand that this is from sort of like um uh was it like roblox character or something but at the same time it's not something that I would personally include in mine and if you go to the top artists and you see that they're not doing that kind of stuff then that's kind of like an indication yeah maybe this is not the best one to have on my portfolio again you can share it in the social media like facebook instagram everything but uh be very careful on, on where you or or what kind of selections you make for your own um for your own process kings you says oh wait we got a question friends from nat Crips says you got anything on super optimized assets say realistic wearable beer games assets or general constraints um see nowadays we are um in the in the studio that i own uh hyperlab we do a lot of br development and we've seen that it's not really the problem of poly count so you can push poly count quite heavily to be honest and, and it's gonna last we actually made the mistake on on, a, on an experience and we uploaded an asset that was like I don't know, like 10 million polygons or something. And the like the visors, we were using the Meta Quest 2, they were able to, to deal with it. Um, it was having some issues, right? But it, it was not crashing. So it's not the poly count that's going to kill you. It's texture resolution. So if you're working on super optimized assets, just try to use the polygons where you need them the most and work really hard on having amazing textures because that's what people are going to see. The problem that we see with VR right now is that, uh, for instance, in Unreal Engine, we use Vulkan as the as the engine, the shading engine, and you don't have like uh, like Lumen, you don't have Nanite. Like there's a lot of things that when, with a computer you might be able to have, but for like a mobile VR game, it's not possible yet. So yeah, that would be my answer there. I know it will be not work, but is there a way with opacity mapping substance painter like making high poly of rifle and making low poly with box bake the holo yeah uh, you can you can bake uh, opacity instead of substance uh, I'll, I'll do a video about that it's it's not difficult i'm working on a magic art pokemon hat for a br game right now <laughs> that's cool at permitted term what the fuck there you go <laughs> cool so jeremy my advice again would be clean up some of your portfolio like eliminate the pieces that you truly know and you truly believe are not the best pieces for for the portfolio and instead focus on having just 10 pieces or 12 pieces that are the best of your work now you have a lot of guns but if you're going to be doing a hard or if you're going to be a hard service artist you need other things other than than guns so robots tanks cars modeling a car or like a car concept is always a very very like interesting uh challenge for any modeler so those would be my my ideas and suggestions for your for your portfolio we got a lot of uh, latin americans right now that's great so this is juan cruz francia from argentina buenos aires we got this and says my name is juan cruz i studied the multimedia design career at the leonardo da vinci higher institute in argentina this career allowed me to learn multiple branches and tools of the past world of design with the 3d world being the one that captivated me Currently, I'm a 3D artist with experience in modeling, texturing, and rendering using programs like Maya, 3D Studio Max, or Blender. Professionally, I work as a 3D journalist, although I never stop dedicating time to improve my skills and incorporate different facets of the 3D world into my abilities. That's great. Always learning, always improving, right? 
So yeah, these are great assets. Um, first advice I will tell you, take this car out. <laughs> it's not helping you. I will rather see a picture of you or a collage of all of these four pieces right here, because this is an unfinished product. So you don't want to have an unfinished product as your cover piece. That just, it's just uh, shooting yourself on the foot. So don't, don't have this one, just like remove it. And uh, these ones are very cool. The first item you make is a high polyhydra and my intention was to achieve the effect of strong wear on the textures. I would say that the metal is a little bit too shiny for that strong wear. I would reduce the roughness just a little bit, but overall, that looks good. It's a very common exercise. I, I teach this on my on my Maya course as well. Well, not on this one, but uh, when I teach at the universities, I usually do that exercise as well. This is a great exercise as well. The cannon, really nice textures. I love what you did right here. Very cool. This thing, the, the boards, it's a very nice touch. It's simple. It doesn't take much time and it adds to the whole like vibe. I love the warm light and the and the nice like rim light that you added. So this is an excellent, excellent portfolio piece. The only thing that I would suggest for this one is a poly count and a textures. And again, careful with the metal edge wear. I can see it right here. You got this um this very uh, like uniform metal edge wear on all of the edges, which is not common. That's not what you're gonna see usually on your elements. Uh, I am to work, and that cream is asking, I am to work with industrial VR training, same digital twins, maybe alien cable. Yeah, yeah. 100 hats for a Dota type game. Nice. So, yeah, VR is, is, is one of those technologies. We, we started working on that since like 2018 here in Mexico, well, at least here in the studio. And it's it's a very, very powerful technology. Unfortunately, it does require a, a higher level of understanding because you do need to optimize a lot. So so that's uh, it's it's not as easy to get into it. There's a lot of like programming things in Bob as well. So it's 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 tricky, but there's a lot of work out there for VR. This is really good, man. Really freaking good. I would probably just add a couple of bevels to this like bars right here just to to remove that super hard edge that we have but the textures they look great like i could see this on a on a triple a game no problem you don't have likes why do you don't have likes you should have some likes on this one let's like it there you go this one's really good man i know it's a simple model but here's the, what a lot of people don't understand when you're working on uh, on a production there's gonna be a lot of uh, a lot of boring objects like you're not always gonna be doing like master chief and his shotgun you're gonna be doing things like this like an air conditioner a barrel a trash can a lamppost a door <laughs> windows like that's part of it and if you can like deliver this level of quality on a simple object then i know you're gonna be able to deliver it on a complex object so this is great. Again, let's show the wireframe and the poly count. You are using Marmoset, so you could upload the little like Marmoset viewer thing so that we can see the, the whole model. But that's a great one. And this one I really like as well. Yeah, this is fun. Yeah, again, simple model. Well done. I feel like the texture there is a little bit stretched. Uh, feels like a little bit tall. Um, but this is good. Again, wireframe and, uh, and maps to see how, how you handle this process. It's a simple one. I would probably increase the roughness on some parts of the plastic a little bit more just to get some more variation. But other than that, yeah, it's pretty cool, man. Just keep working. And another thing that I would suggest for your particular portfolio is uh, what I just mentioned. You have some very cool, relatively simple models. Let's go for a more advanced one, something that's going to blow everyone out of the water. Be like, damn, that's freaking amazing. It could be like a tank. It could be, I don't know, like a train. It could be like a weapon, like something that's really, really impressive. Because all of this are very impressive from a technical standpoint, but not from like a cool factor. You know what I mean? So that's the kind of stuff that uh, we need to be a little bit more or just invest a little bit more time in to get something that looks uh, just nicer. That was Juan Cruz Francia. Let's go now with It's Rishav Edits. Okay, it says, Hi, I'm Rishav from India. My skills are 3D modeling, digital painting, vector art, and I'm looking for short and long-term projects. Let's take a look. Okay, first thing I'm seeing, a lot of stuff. We got a lot of pieces, and again, not always when you have a lot of pieces, all of the pieces are going to be good. When you like keep going on your career, your portfolio is going to start growing naturally. So don't try to just like pack everything onto your portfolio right now. It's better to have few pieces when you're starting, and as you keep getting better and better and doing works, you're going to be adding more stuff to it. So what I see right here is I see some cool pieces. Um, 
usually if you're gonna be a 3d artist you don't want to include a lot of your 2d stuff in here like this lady portrait that i see right here I i've seen this technique before there are filters online that you can use as well to to generate this so it's not really going to help you on the on the portfolio side of things because it's something that can be done relatively easy so all of these illustration things that you have right here i would probably take them out um or keep it as a separate account where you where you market yourself as a 2d guy careful with the renders this renders right here uh, i've talked about this before like overlapping the fire and the sparks and everything it tends to look cool sometimes but you gotta tone it down because if the model's not there yet then adding that sort of stuff is not gonna help you and i can see a little bit of an issue with this one right here and the main issue is that's way too dense like this is way way too dense look at the density on the skull right there you have way too many polygons and you don't have all of the forms that that polygons could really utilize to make it look really interesting this looks very stylized kind of like a fortnite uh, weapon or something and uh, and when you take a look at the on the poly count it doesn't match so having a minimalistic looking weapon with a super high poly count it doesn't match my advice if you want to take it we got the the blender course the the 3d weapon for or triple a weapon for for games and in that one i go over the whole process so that you can create something that looks a little bit more professional this one looks a little bit better like the topology and the sharpness yeah yeah exactly this is what we're looking for this is the kind of like a level of detail that we want to see that's a really good render as well so my question is why why do we have that level of quality in this one and not on this one or on this one i know this is from a tutorial as well i believe it's from a tutorial because i've seen this concept before or I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's a tutorial, but I've seen this concept before. So we definitely need to improve a little bit. The colors are a little bit too saturated right there. Go through your portfolio, my friend, and check which pieces really like look good. Like this one really looks good. This one's not bad. There are some issues here, metal edgeware and, and modeling wise, but especially like this shot right here, it's not bad. Like I could see this in a in a lower budget game, but uh, we definitely need to improve. The presentation of our portfolio because right now it just looks like um like when you see the whole like the element as a whole it looks like a like your collection of all your 3d work and and you want your portfolio to be your best work okay always always your best work this one's fun it's nice and the render is good as well so yeah uh here like this is this doesn't make sense like why is the tombstone here <laughs> the tombstone shouldn't be here and i understand that this element is, is for like a like cinematic or something which is very high on on the on the poly count but again like you have a very high poly count right here and then you only have one 4k texture this is the kind of objects where udims are very useful if you haven't seen my udim video it's on on youtube where i talk on how to divide this into multiple tiles and get a lot more resolution because you can already see the pixelation that we're getting on the details when we see it from afar it's not as um it's perceivable we don't see it as much but when we get this close-up shots it's definitely definitely there so so careful on that one my friend let's go now with the douglas there we go. This says, I'm Douglas Grain. I'm an intermediate 3D modeling artist. I'm basic 3D animation. I'm specializing in creating props for games, but I also know how to do other types of modeling. I'm always learning and experimenting with different modeling software and art styles. I'm open to new opportunities and ready to face new challenges. Cool. So again, first thing I'm seeing is that we need a little bit more clarity on the portfolio. I see some good pieces and then I see some questionable pieces. So for instance, this one, <laughs> uh, no, this is not something that you want in your portfolio. It reminds me of the, um, it reminds me of the joke. There was a joke like uh, a couple of years ago, it was called like the greatest portfolio, the greatest 3D portfolio. Where is it? Let's see if uh, I can find it. It was it was a joke video, and it was just a guy like showing a cube and being like low poly, and it was just a cube, and it was like high poly, and he subdivided like cube to millions of polygons. Animation, and the cube just like fell to one side. It was very funny. It was like ten years ago. So yeah, this is what I'm seeing here. It's just like okay, yeah, it's a pillar, okay, but. This is not portfolio worthy. If you want to do a whole like kit of this thing, it's like uh, do pillars and uh, and I don't know barrels and boxes and and you do like twenty or thirty assets on the. Um, it was look at meme. Let's look like a meme portfolio cube. Can we find it. Ah, uh, 3D 
It was like one of these guys. It was just a cube. But yeah, anyway. So yeah, if you want to do something like this, like simple objects, make a whole kit out of them. So that it's a lot easier to, um, to do. This product placement or product is fine. Um, this one's... Uh, Again, I understand what you were going for, and, and the fact that this is a work, like you did this for a work, that's great. Actually, this is fine. I, I don't agree with the saturation of the colors. They're a little bit, like there's a lot of contrast and a lot of saturation. I would have preferred going for something more like this, more, more pastel. But um, yeah, I mean, the fact that you were hired to do this, that's great. That means that, that this has worked. This already worked. So that's 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 cool. Same for this one. I feel like it's a little bit dark. <laughs> it reminds me of the, of the little island that we just finished for Maya. Very cool. Uh, careful with the low poly versions right here, because again, you have a very high poly, soft, smooth version on the octopus uh, tentacles, and then the cannon is very low poly. So we gotta be, we always gotta be careful with all of those details. Like the the level of detail on the whole scene should be very close to each other. Careful with this cloth as well. I can see that you used a cloth texture with transparency, but you forgot to add the normal map, so it just looks like a flat texture with little holes in it. So we need to add the 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 cloth information. And this was two months ago, so this was not that long ago. Uh, you you need to to definitely work a little bit on that. This one is cool. I like the models. I like the illumination, but I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I've never met an artist with a room as clean as this one. Like if I take a picture of what I have right here, it's a mess. It's a complete mess. You're not seeing it. You're just seeing me and my background, but it's a mess. So add some mess in here, some posters, some like, I don't know, like a Coke can, like a hamburger wrapper. I don't know. Like we artists tend to be a little bit messy or not everyone, right? But at least I am a little bit messy. So this one looks very, very clean, right? Right? So, and, and due to the fact that it looks very clean, it also looks a little bit empty. So be careful with that one as well. Careful here. I can see that you're reusing the same texture for the uh, for the background. In this one, it looks nice. In this one, it looks stretched. So that's the kind of st things that uh, that we need to to take a look at. No, this is the Majora's Mask from um, from uh, Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Um, let's see. Uh, Nat Chris says the first the first hat took about ten times longer than the last due to skill increase. Yeah, that's how it works. By the way, Nat Crip, like the the more you do something, the the more efficient you become. Five bags of uh, cat candy on my table. Yeah, like I got my measuring tape and I got my D and D owl bear. Like I got like a mess here on my desk. It's, <laughs> that's how it goes. Uh, this one looks fun. Again, I, I think you're going for very high contrast, and, and high contrast is not bad, but nowadays the cinematic like trend that we're seeing is that things are a little bit more pastel, things are a little bit not as contrasty, not as saturated. This was something that was seen a little bit more, I would say, in like the 90s, where everything was just like in your face, like color. And nowadays you can see it uh, just like look at the Oscar contenders, and you're going to see very like toned down colors and things like that. And then on this one, you're not having as much contrast. We're missing a little bit of light. I would like to see a little bit more light on uh, on this one right here. So let's see. Yeah, same for this one right here. It's a uh, it's a little bit weird. I would probably take this one out again. I understand if you already did use this for work, and that's fine. But it's uh, it's not great. This one's cool. I would just add a little bit more variation on the materials because uh, we need to to just have that uh, work a little bit better. Same for this one. You're going for very dark renders, and, and we need a little bit more color. That's why I like to add a little bit of a, of a gray background on my elements, just to add more uh, resolution. Careful here. This one has a nice texture. I, I of course, know it's Andrew from Lord of the Rings. But the problem is, is that... Um, you're wasting topology in areas that don't need it as much, and then you're not using as much topology where you actually need it. So on this border right here, we should have a, a round or nicer curve, and, the, and and we should have not as many points on, on other elements. So so yeah, careful there too on how you optimize. And again, the render is very dark. It's, it's, it's getting a little bit difficult to see, so we, we got to be careful on that thing right there. Now, give me just one minute, guys. I got a lot of messages here from from work. So, uh, 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 Give me just one second.
One second. Okay. We're having some issues on the studio. <laughs> Gonna have to uh, to take a look at that as soon as we're finished over here. So let's now go with Via. Via Gelati. He says he started modeling about three months ago, which is a, a good amount of time from Brazil as well. Nice. We got a lot of Brazilians this time around. Interesting. That's very, very cool. Okay, so modeling-wise, I mean, Pokeball is always a, a nice effect. However, you did mirror it to the back, and uh, and the Pokeballs do not open from the back, so be very careful there. You do need to model properly on the backside as well, so it closes a circle, and uh, and that's the kind of stuff that, uh, that we need to do. Um, hammer. Nice. Thor's Hammer. It's a, it's a good model. I like it. And this Among Us right here. So the presentation is a little bit... Um, hard contrast again you're probably i'm not sure if you're using an hdr it kind of looks like you are but the background is very dark and very very contrasty whenever i use hdris i recommend using hdris that are more global right like a like a core jar or like a factory or something just so that you have more interesting bounces and not just the sort of like fabricated or or cgi computer effect now you're just starting my friend three months it's a very good amount of time for for this sort of result that's usually what i was doing when i was starting so so keep pushing if you want we have of course courses that you can uh, watch in our udemy to um to improve your your presentation and your technical knowledge of the of the process i'm not sure what software you're using at least oh blender okay yeah so yeah so the blender course might be a really good one to to get you um to the next level as well and one of the things that i would recommend since you're already exploring the sort of like um the areas of 3d try to decide what kind of stuff that you want to do do you want to do modeling for games do you want to do modeling for film do you want to do characters do you want to do assets that's the kind of questions that you have to ask yourself let's see we're now gonna go oh wow we got a lot of portfolios Just one second. Okay, so... Let's go now with uh, this guy right here. Owner2025. I, I don't know how to pronounce that name right there. But let's go with you, my friend. Uh, says he's been doing 3D for one year and uh, he is uh, grateful for all the excellent courses. I can see he's taken some of my um, intro to ZBrush courses. So let's take a look. This one's fun. This one's nice. It's a nice sculpt. Oh, a great 3D print. Yeah, so this is what I was mentioning earlier today. And um, in this thing right here, I mean, this shows perfectly. And, and this is the thing. Nowadays, with, with 3D becoming such a big industry, you guys can make a living and can work in a lot of different things that might have not been a an idea or an option a couple of years ago. And 3D printing is one of them. Like the 3D printing scene, especially for collectibles, for things like D&D, &D, uh, Warhammer, and things like that is really, really big. So as you can see, this character right here, he doesn't have UVs, he doesn't have anything, but he prints amazingly. And then people can buy this thing and just like paint it and do really, really cool things. So this is really, really nice, man. Really nice. I like that one. Um, yeah, same for this one. I'm not sure what the character's aim one. I'm not sure where he is from. He looks nice. It would be great if we could see him 3D print as well. He looks very anime-ish. Reminds me a little bit of uh, Song Lee or Song Lee from, uh, from Genshin Impact. This one's interesting. Um, it's a little bit more complicated. Or it's not for 3D print, or at least it would be a little bit more complicated to 3D print this thing right here. But it's, uh, it's definitely something interesting. Something that we can... Um, that we can do right here so yeah that, that, that that's nice texturing wise i feel like this is only poly paint i'm not sure if you're doing any any like uvs and everything but be careful with the proportions you can see the the details and the and the roughness that we see on the textures of the element and we're missing some of that even here on the bones you can see that there's more variation on the on the spine of the bones so so careful there turtle this one's nice can we see the face? Yes, we can see the face. That's cool. Yeah, this is a nice, like, hard surface exercise. It's like a cartoony turtle. That's cool. This is great. I would love to see this one 3D printed as well. 
that's a nice nice model i'm not sure if i, I mean for now I, I guess you can keep it on your on your uh portfolio but one thing i'm noticing is that you don't have a lot of like production ready pieces for like games because we need to see again polycount we need to see ubi maps we need to see bakes that sort of thing uh this is of course by uh, pablo muñoz gomez i believe very cool tutorial as well and yeah you nailed the character very very nicely However, again, I think this is only um, this is only polypaint, right? Like this is not retopologized and animation ready. So for concepting, like ZBrush concepting, it's usually good. But we definitely need to to learn the other process if you want to be part of um, of the of the like industry as well. Yeah, Pablo is amazing. He's a great artist. I've been I've been following him as well for a lot a lot of time. I'm not sure if he started like roughly at the same time I started, but he's been doing like online stuff for longer. Definitely. He's really, really cool. Really cool guy as well. Okay, now let's go with Adam. Uh, okay, guys, so I got bad news. We are having a situation on the museum where we have the VR, ex VR experiences and I'm going to have to go there. That's quite unfortunate. So I apologize, my friends, but this is going to be the last uh, portfolio for, for today. And what I'm going to do is uh, as soon as I come back, I'm going to go, I'm going to record this. I know normally we do them live, but I'm going to record just the, the remaining of the portfolios and I'll upload the, the second part probably like the, just the whole thing uh tomorrow on on youtube uh i, I apologize i i was not expecting to have this issue but there's some human resources thing that i need to go and take care of unfortunately let me just go then with adam adam if you're in the chat then my friend you're gonna be the last one right now adam jew from los angeles he says my name is adam and i specialize in stylized pbr environments and props i recently graduated from the university of southern california and then opened to work in los angeles that's great and yeah this looks really nice man like this cars look really nice you're following the metal edge word advice not have it everywhere it's a very cool golf cart right here um this is a very nice uh chevrolet stylized effect i do think the texture is a little bit too grungy i would just reduce it a little bit especially because we're going for this sort of like cartoon effect so so yeah this is uh a little bit uh complex here it's nice nice yep a lot of cars that's great one thing that i would recommend for this one because you had a lot of very cool renders yeah make sure to include the wireframes and if you can include the texture maps as well that would be really nice as well this is very cool um films nowadays they're getting a little bit away from this grungy stuff so doing things a little bit cleaner might be a good idea this light is a little bit too blue too contrasty so we definitely need to to work a little bit here on the lights to get something that looks a little bit better but uh but yeah this that's that's cool yeah modeling wise it's perfect really good assets i would definitely take out this background right here you don't need it and it's just taking away from everything else so so just just remove the background this is this is like film quality stuff there you go koki thanks for the for the prime man this is definitely definitely cool and this is definitely again film level so this is not for games but this is very very nice and then you have this one right here it's like ship nice a couple other objects we need to add a couple just a little bit more objects here and there you know I know someone's cleaning right now, so they probably moved the objects around, but it does look a little bit empty for, for the whole thing. However, the variation of your textures and your light is looking quite, quite nice. My advice would be to do other kinds of environments. I can see that you did a series of cars and then you did some like nautical themes, maybe some sci-fi, maybe some like medieval or fantasy, like variation in the, in the range of, of kind of like concepts and things that you can do is very, very important. So yeah, that's it, my friends. Again, I'm really, really sorry. I I was not expecting this to happen, but I need to go talk to my guys and uh, and make sure that um, everything is in order. So I'm gonna have to go over there, like literally right now. I am gonna actually let's do something. Could we? What do you think, Sarn? Could we do a second part of our live stream, like on Monday, maybe? Because because I do I do want to cover everyone on Monday and if someone forgot or wants to submit they're gonna have the the extra days here on the on the um, on the channel yeah let, let's do a second part sounds good 
we got like 15 more left to cover. So, so there's still, let's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 more. Yeah. So we still got a, a ways to go. Okay. So, so we're going to continue this on Monday then, my friends, uh, same time, 11 a.m. Mexico time. So it's around this time. And, um, and we'll just keep covering the rest and then we'll upload everything on during the week. Okay. So again, sorry, my friends. Sorry for the, the sudden interruption. And, uh, I'll be back. Uh, we're going to be on the Discord channel. Uh, we got our Skulltober still going. So if you want to participate, there's a special channel there. And again, as I mentioned before, we we released the newest Amaya course as well. So you guys are free to check it out in our Udemy page. Uh, thanks for everyone. Thanks for being here on the stream. Have a great weekend and I'll see you back very, very soon. Bye-bye. Hello everyone. There we are. Hello everyone and welcome to the second part of this month's portfolio review today we're going to be going over the remaining like submissions that we had from this month as you guys know every single month we have a portfolio review where you guys submit your stuff and i go through it give you tips feedback things that i think are good things that i think are not as good and hopefully help you get into a better position for your 3d journey so um yeah that's pretty much it so let's go just one second here and there we go okay so last time I actually don't remember where we stopped, but hopefully I will remember once I see the names. Let's see which one was it. Still a couple of missing. I do remember seeing this one, right? We did see owner with his um, like characters for 3D printing and stuff. So that one we already went through. And then Adam, I think Adam was the last one that we saw, right? Because Adam had this very cool vehicles. Yeah, I think this was the what the final one. Adam has this very cool vehicles and this very cool scene right here. So let's go with let's go with Gabriel Maltias. And Gabriel or Gabriel, he's been um, on the Discord, very active on the Discord as well. Is one of our of our main like uh, followers, and he shared the whole process for this skeleton chest that he created for BD Games. This looks very 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 nice. So, um, on the link that he submitted, he only submitted this one. I'm not sure if he wants me to review the other ones, but I'm still gonna take a peek in just a second. Let's go over this one first. There you go. We got our first follow. Thanks, Corey, for the follow, man. We're getting close to our goal today. So uh, the first thing that I noticed is that this is a very cool concept. And I think he came up with the concept. He It was inspired by the collector's chest from Call of Duty Black Ops 4. But he, I think he did most of the, like, the design process because he was debating whether or not to add all of these lines and stuff like that. It's a very complex shape. It's very organic, as you guys can see. And I do like the texture work. Um, sculpting also looks fine. I do feel like topology wise, we're a little bit high on the topology count. This thing that he's doing right now on, or right here on the skulls where there's overlap between the skulls, that's fine. It, it's not really that much of an issue. I know there's always like this, uh, sort of a debate between the, the artists, uh, or in the artist's world about whether or not we should have, uh, overlap. Overlap's not wrong as long as it's not on an object that's going to deform and things like that. So this one in particular, I don't feel it's that big of a deal. Poly count, again, it's definitely a little bit high. Um, it could be simplified. I don't care too much about poly count nowadays, depending on the game or the or the project you're working for, especially if you're going to be using things like Unreal Engine 5 with Nanite. So poly count's not really that much of an issue. Okay, so so we are copying the, the, um, the concept right here. That's fine. So yeah, I, I think execution-wise, this is good. My only advice for you, Gabriel, in this particular one would be to try to optimize it a little bit more. Because again, texture wise looks good, UVs looks good, even the sculpt looks very nice. It's the, the poly count right here. Like I can see a very, very dense poly count and uh, we might need to, to optimize it a little bit. Usually in all of these areas that are very flat, like there's not a lot of things happening, you wanna keep like big squares to just catch everything with your normal map. However, I understand why you went for a high polygon. You probably wanted to capture as much of the silhouette as possible. But again, usually, uh, unless you're going to 3D print it, uh, a lot of these details are supposed to be baked. Yeah, this is good. Now, I'm going to take a peek into your into your main... Like, Okay, well, that's the first one. That's perfect. Now, I see here that you're a student right now, which is great. 
because the student phase or the student stage when you're when you're just a student that's the moment where you need to be doing these ambitious projects and and it's going to be very funny because the reason why you need to do this is to fuck up like if you fuck up more hopefully we don't get banned in youtube for saying this but the more you fuck up the more you're going to learn and um and that's one of the ways in which you're going to be able to improve as an artist and the only way to do that is by trying complex things like this one so now that you know for instance that this density of a mesh is not ideal on your next mesh you're going to be doing something a little bit more interesting philip thanks for the follow destiny what's up man welcome we're uh, early today and actually we're early today i'm not sure if i share this on the on the discord channel yet but one of the reasons why we're early is because i'm gonna have an event in the next couple of days let me show you I was invited to be uh, a presenter to do a workshop on a very big event here in, in the in the States University. It's like a it's like a very cool thing. Here we go. There you go. So I'm going to be presenting 3D, the new frontier of design from today until uh, Friday. We're going to have uh, three three hour classes on so nine hours of content. Unfortunately, I don't think they're going to be streaming it, but I'll see if I can get you guys some shots from from there. Um, so, yeah, that's why we're streaming very early today, because after the stream, I'm going to prepare a couple of things for that event and then I'm going to head out there. Cool. So that was Gabriel. Keep up the good work, my friend. This is looking good. Again, I would recommend doing more assets. And since you already did a very complex asset right here, because I, I remember it took you like pretty much like a month or something, um, I would recommend trying something a little bit simpler just to make sure that you understand all of the things that we mentioned here. I also seem to remember i'm not exactly sure but i also kind of seem to remember that you might have used uh siri measure for a couple of things again i'm not sure and i'm not accusing you or anything just again keep your what's the word keep your um poly count in mind because we can't go that high okay let's go to the next one that was that was gabriel now we got captain aimer says hello here is my art station portfolio i want to become a character and props artist whoever sees my portfolio think is great but no one wants to hire me for a job i want you to analyze my work and please give me some tips and guide me and tell me where i'm lacking i completely ready to some constructive criticism let's take a look this is amir ushiha amir ushiha from uh, pakistan nice okay so the first thing that i see on your portfolio is that we have a lot of pieces a lot of pieces and Whenever I see a lot of pieces, I usually, usually, I would say like 90% of the times, I know that not all of the pieces are going to be of the highest quality. Not always, because you got some artists that have a, a huge trajectory, like a lot of years of experience and a lot of very cool products. So in here, I can already see a couple of elements that I would just like take out of the portfolio, keep them on your, um, on your Facebook, your LinkedIn, your Instagram or whatever. For instance, all of these houses right here, you got five little houses, but from um from a recruiting perspective each piece that i see right here it's not teaching me new things surgeon what's up man welcome so you gotta be very careful when you do a lot of the same thing because it just seems like filler right like you know in, in animes or in series where where you got like filler episodes this just feels like that what would i do i would pick my favorite one or my well, or just like four and do a little collage so that when I click on it, I see all, all the four of those in a single sort of like submission. That way I know that you can apply this concept, this like minimalistic concept to several pieces. And, and it's good to see all of this range because there's different things in illumination and things like that. But again, it, it looks very same-ish. So, so you don't wanna, you don't wanna have that. Um, careful with this kind of uh, renders as well. This is a very, very, very simple render. It's just a couple of boxes, a couple of columns, and a single like emission light here in the center. So I know that you were going for a, a prototype. It says right here, game prototype, or just like an environment concept piece. But this is five years ago. So I know that right now you're not doing this sort of like quality. And this one is going to hurt you a little bit more than it's going to help you. Um, I do have some old stuff, like very old stuff on my portfolio, and it's not bad to have old stuff because you can see the, the progress. So if I see this one right here, and then I see another environment up here that's really, really good, that shows that you've improved. However, I do feel like, um, like in this particular case, this one's like this couple of portfolio pieces are not helping. This one, on the other hand, this one's good. I like this one. It might be simple. Again, this is four years ago. It's a little bit simpler, but it looks a little bit more cinematic. So it looks, it looks cool. Um, I like this construction shots. That's nice. And this like final shot. Very, very good. I like it. So this one, even though it's an old one and it's not as like 
complete with because it's just like plants and and, and vegetation and environment um it, it looks way way better now on the character department like from the get-go i see problems with the faces of your characters most of the faces of your characters are are need a little bit more work proportions are fine your anatomy is, is there i mean you can still improve that a little bit more careful here it seems like the normal maps are inverted i'm not sure where you're rendering it but if you're rendering this in in blender which seems like it and you exported the normal maps in in direct x format what you're gonna see there is just gonna see a, a flip on the y channel on the green channel and that's why it looks like this thing are pushing out instead of pushing in because yeah the, the normal maps on this character look not great so yeah i i think if you want to be a character artist if that's what you're going for if that's the kind of like careers you want to be picking or the jobs that you're going to be picking we definitely need to improve on the forms of our faces the anatomy as well needs just a little bit more work this one looks very cool reminds me a little bit of uh, gavala the the character that i did a couple of years ago but again the 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 face it, it just looks like like old school sort of like 2000s 2010s characters where where you're not really seeing the sort of like level of detail this is one of the things that i like like and hate about metahumans right so you guys know that metahumans are the new thing uh for character creation and the not, not the problem that the challenge that we have with metahumans is that if you want to be a character artist you should be able to get as close as possible to the metahuman quality because if a tool can do a human automatically with this level of detail you as an artist should be able to match that if they ask you to do a specific character the one thing that i don't like about metahumans and this is going to be like fixed in a couple of years don't, don't get me wrong but one of the things that i don't like is that right now the customization is still a little bit finicky so you need to to do a lot of like things to to really change and get things exactly like what you want and the other thing i don't like about metahumans is that they still feel a little bit on the uncanny valley side of thing uh but that's just my personal opinion they're amazing models of course um it's just that there's there's always like something like i i don't see yet a game where a metahuman is going to be like the main character this is they're so great for secondary characters or tertiary characters but like a main character done entirely on metahuman without the like the tweak and the, the refinement of a character artist i don't think they were there yet but we will get there for sure with all of the technology careful with all of these studies as well um is this is this maradona yeah okay so when you're doing likenesses it's very very important to be super helpful careful about likenesses we have another student on the server evgen and he's working on an on a ian mckellen uh, likeness he's been he's been spending probably like one or two months on that like a sculpt alone and then you can see like I, I see the first picture i didn't think it was maradona until i saw the the, the uniform now you can start to see a couple of things so we do need to be a little bit more careful in how we uh present things this one right here it feels like you used uh marvelous designer or something yeah there you go because the cloth does look a little bit more realistic but there's still like proportions man they're, they're a little bit off look at this arm right here look at that twist right there that that's not what we're um what we're doing Super Monkey, you are, um, you're Gab Gabriel? If you're Gabriel, let me know and I'll go back real quick to yours. Just to give you the, the main notes again. No problem. Because uh, I know that we are doing this a little bit earlier than usual. So, yeah, it's, um, it's, uh, the proportions are, are not there yet. And, but here's the thing, and this is what I, I see as a, as a big strength for you, Amir. You do have the knowledge, the, the process knowledge. So, you know about textures, you know about UVs, you know about modeling, sculpting, you know the softwares. And that's usually, like, the first battle that you have as a, as a 3D artist. Now that you not know the software, the next stage is to start working on the refinement of things. So, what do I see here? I see a very glossy skin, oily almost. It looks like it's covered with oil it doesn't look like sweat um some of the normal maps again they look a little bit weird like on this like a uh, chest right here and um the, the composition is cool like having three different gladiators it's, it's nice but again the quality on the assets especially on the materials and some of the models is is not there look at this this is the kind of stuff that we gotta be very careful about and i'm being a, real, a little bit more like intense on this review because you asked for it but um look at this like this is the kind of stuff again that people just like see and they're like hmm you didn't spend enough time just like modifying this thing so that it does not like overlap the arm horribly like it does right there um same thing with like uh the metal bits and the cloth like there are things that we we can improve from a, from a software perspective i can't really tell you like oh yeah you need to learn zbrush or you need to learn substance because it seems to me that you already know how to use the softwares it's more about learning how to use the softwares and in approach that sort of like really refined effect like this one right here 
I know this is like a like a wood statue or something. This is a little bit closer in, in the quality that you need to achieve with every single asset that you have on all of the other characters. And go through your portfolio and be very honest with yourself. It's like, do I really want this giant frog here on my portfolio? Like, is it really adding something or it was just like a cool thing that I did to learn, I don't know, a little bit of texturing and something. So if, if it's not really helping you, it might be hurting you. And that's the kind of stuff that you need to to be very honest about and it does hurt because you spend time on it right but once you understand that that time was not wasted time because you learn things even if people never see the work that still means that you improved as an artist okay so gabriel um i was telling people and um we're of course gonna have this thing on on youtube soon but I was telling people that in this particular case, you did an amazing job and I was really happy to see your progress there on the Discord channel. The only thing I don't love is the density of the topology. It's a little bit too dense for a game asset, especially a game asset that's not going to be deforming. It's not going to move a lot. So there's a lot of lines over here that we can minimize to to reduce a little bit of the poly count. I'm not sure what the full poly, poly count is, but I'm... I'm pretty sure that it might be like 100k or something because it's a very complex thing right like we pretty much have like four characters right here plus all of the skulls and things so so it's definitely definitely worth it like you're not wasting topology but from a game perspective you usually want to optimize things a little bit more so my advice uh, i was giving you is try to do a new asset it could be similar to this one but try to focus on on really optimizing it for games because with this as if i'm a recruiter and i see this i see that you know how to sculpt you know how to texture you know how to uvs you know how to present as a very nice clean render which is great not very common to see um by the way today we just released a new video in youtube about how to go do good renders because that's one of the of the first things that i see here in portfolio review where renders are really bad this one's good though so so yeah the next thing is i need to make sure that you understand how to optimize things and you're probably going to be able to do that with a smaller asset because this was a very very big ambitious project okay let's go now with it. james it says hello there thanks for your effort in creating all these valuable contents and reviewing portfolios for us i'm a 3d game design student at brisbane australia and i've been constantly trying to upskill myself by learning different skills across a different softwares would love to know what should i do with my portfolio to make it more attractive to potential for potential future employer let's take a look james oi cool okay so we see a very clean portfolio here not a lot of pieces which again it can be a good thing and uh and then we have some very cool pieces and then some questionable choices so this telescope right here great this is amazing it's a simple one it from what i can see it's kind of like subdivision like modified even a little bit of a rig right there that's that's great this is an amazing piece the next thing that you're missing on this one is just a a breakdown of the textures that could be a good idea like some texture maps to see what um what's going on and uh once we have that it it's just um, a matter of um of maybe having it on a scene because you have a very cool scene over here like this new one so the, the that one can definitely be on this thing right here now this sort of shapes they're very cool to look out they're not super complex to model because they're just like uh tauruses and uh, and babbles and stuff like that there are some like tricky effects right here this render i really like as a thumbnail it looks really good but now that i see it right here it does look a little bit empty stone is usually not as rough right here or usually this like pores if you go to old cathedrals and things you're gonna see that the sort of erosion goes towards the inside of the rock not the outside so it's very smooth to the touch and then you have all of these things going um, going in i will try to fill this in be very careful with the scale that's another thing so the scale on this things right here on the on the floor doesn't match with the whole thing like if, if you if you tell me or ask me how tall is this thing i would say like a human would be roughly at this height right and if the human is, is this tall like to this towards this arches right here then this bricks on the floor are way way too big so this makes the whole thing look a lot smaller so i would make the texture on this uh, floor a lot smaller to compensate or to to really sell the the proper size this one looks a little bit better and uh, we need to fill it with something else because i do feel like it looks a little bit empty at this point right like there's nothing there's not like flags there's no torches there's no lights there's nothing it's just like a like a big thing right here so you would usually see paintings or benches something right like well, what is this thing uh, we need to know a little bit more about the kind of like the story of this thing um these assets are great again relatively simple relatively minimalistic uh i can see that they are hard surface yeah that's fine 
this this could be game ready can be slightly optimized but it's not that big of a deal this look good again not there these ones are not gonna hurt you but they're not gonna help you that much because if you can do more complex things then i know you can do this or sort of like simple things right here but this ones look very very cool and the fact that there's a lot of them that that's always a good idea for portfolios this one looks like happy from uh was it happy from the from the movie i think it was so this one looks okay what are you using oh you're using a lot of uh, of decals and stuff oh that's pretty cool see that's interesting because by using decals you're showing that you know a different type of optimizing technique i don't love the robot i do feel like it's a little bit simplistic and the render right here i'm not sure what you're using to render but again the light looks very fake so i would definitely try using cycles if possible you're using blender right yeah so try to do the same thing that you're doing but with cycles because all of these decals are great like uh like using um, stream sheets and, st and stuff like that this is great especially if you're going to be going into games you're going to be using this quite a bit but it's important that you try to um that you try to present it again in a nicer way and i do feel like the renders here on the robot are, are not doing you any favor so this ones can definitely definitely be improved same for this one. Are you using EV? I, I'm on, I, I, I think I'm seeing that you're using EV. And here's the thing with EV. EV is really good when the, when we're doing things. And it was it was well, it was not that way to explain. People have the idea that because EV is supposed to be a real time renderer, that you should use it to showcase how models would look inside of a game engine. And even though it's true, it's not just that it's a, it's a real-time engine. You, you need to use things that are being used right now in the industry. And for instance, right now, Unreal already has RTX, right? Ray tracing. So you need to use a ray tracing engine. Marmoset, for instance, has its own ray tracing. Uh, Cycles, it's a ray tracing engine. So you can definitely present your stuff in a way, way nicer uh, way. Or in a nice, yeah, nicer presentation. Again, this this piece, I don't, I don't particularly love it as much. But uh, it, it's not... I might take this one out, actually, to be honest. If I had to decide to, to remove one, I would probably remove that one. This one I like. Again, I can see this as a game engine, but this is very important. You're doing a lot of game engine renders inside of Blender. And what the recruiters want to see, especially if you want to work in games, is they want to know or see that you can implement all of these things inside of a game engine. Unity, Unreal, Godot, any of the game engines out there. And um, this is a good model. Like this is very well optimized. Textures are looking good. The books look good. So, so as long as you can present this inside of a game with like the materials from a game and stuff like that, that's very cool. I'm not sure if you're doing like geometry notes over here. L looks a little bit like it, which is fine. That's a good lamp. Yeah. So, so this is a good environment. But again, the render and the presentation, it's uh, it's like taking away a couple of points because even though it looks very cool. I know that this is not a, a, a game engine, so I know that in the game engine, things might look slightly different, and it's better to present them the way they're going to be looking on the on the game. Chris Oroshi, what's up, guys? No, you're not late. We're early. It's a little bit of a difference right there. Random book distribution with a geometry node. Yeah, and see, the geometry nodes, that's the thing, right? If you tell me that you did this with geometry nodes, I'm going to be like, oh, that's very cool. But how would you solve this instead of Unreal if we don't have geometry nodes right there? Are you going to export all of the FBXs as a single asset that cannot be moved? Are you going to recreate the geometry nodes with the blueprints so that you can get a similar result inside of Unreal uh, at runtime? Like, there are a lot of questions that you're going to be asked when, the, when they tell you, we like this, but how we would do this inside of the engine? And that's the problem with using a DCC application like Blender or, or Maya and, and rendering there when you want to go into games. Games, if you want to go into games, you should always try to present things in a game engine or as close as possible to a game engine to get the best possible result. So this is a good portfolio, James. I think you're in a good position. I understand that you're a student or at least it, it looks like it. Yeah, you mentioned on your message that you're still a student. My advice would be, because I can see you like some hard surface stuff, go for some more complex hard surface stuff. Here, let me show you. Oh, so for robot concept art, like a very common one, because I feel like you, you do have already the skills to tackle something a little bit more, more complex. Like when, when my students are just starting, like for instance, probably today uh, in the in the seminar that I'm going to be teaching, we're going to be doing, I don't know, something like this or or something like very simple, like 
<laughs> like even like this, right? Like a like a very simple cartoonish character because it's it's people that are just starting their 3D journey. But for you, you can already go for more complex things. It could be a character like this. It could be like something like this with a lot of cables and a lot of like panels and uh, and devils and things like that. That's the sort of like elements that you want to present to your portfolio because I know that if you can do something like this, you're not gonna have any issue if we're working on a simpler project and I need you to do I don't know something like this, right? However, if you do something like this, which is relatively simple then i'm not sure if you're gonna be able to handle something like this that's the that's that's why the portfolio should always be like an overshoot and be like this is my maximum level because i know that if we ask you to do something that's below that maximum level you're not gonna have any issue with it and and that's another like point that we, we've talked about this before here in the reviews when you start working on the industry a lot of the times you're not gonna be like uh in charge of doing super complex things right like when you're just starting you're gonna be doing simple props simple characters things like that and the lead character artists or the or the senior character artists the senior prop artists they're gonna be doing the the cool stuff the the hero shots and stuff like that as you keep growing and growing and you improve yourself that's when you're gonna get the opportunity to model like more advanced things so it's not uncommon and and i've seen that i mean that happens in in my studio as well when a new guy comes in usually they're gonna be doing walls benches houses i don't know like a garbage can things like that and then as they get better and better we're gonna start asking them to do the secondary characters the tertiary characters and eventually they might be doing like the sidekick because we usually always have a, a senior character artist working with us or a character artist that's uh, more well prepared to to handle that kind of stuff so yeah good job james i i really like the concept by the way i'm not sure if you're using a concept from um from a, a concept or if you came up with, with it yourself but if you came up with it yourself it's very good one last piece of advice for this one in particular add more stuff we need some chairs we need some desks we need some flags we need some papers just flying posters something because it does look very clean very pristine and uh and nowadays especially in games there's always yeah paintings that's a that's a great suggestion Sarn. so nowadays in games there's always something interesting to look at this is the kind of like a game design or level design that we would have like a couple like like 10 years ago where the the engines were not as powerful and you couldn't have as many assets but nowadays you can definitely have way way more stuff so so go crazy go crazy okay that was james let's now go with hasibul hossein says hi there i am learning 3d game props design i'm from bangladesh and i've been constantly trying to upskill myself by learning different skills across different softwares Thank you for your effort into creating all these valuable contents and reviewing portfolios for us. Would love to know what to do with my portfolio. Okay. So we see this portfolio. I see a couple of cool pieces and some that again are not meant to be in a portfolio. What do I mean by this? Let's take a look at this one. This sandal product bomb. This is the kind of stuff that you can actually get some nice money by doing like product shots and render shots for like local or or, or, or national or international products it's a it's a good market uh, i'm actually again going to be talking about this quite uh, a bit during our seminar this week but the thing about this is as a 3d artist it's too simple like this is something that i would expect any of my students to be able to do after two or three weeks using blender or maya it's not something that shows me that you have uh skills like like uh, like really good skills right like it's a really good model it's a really good game asset a little bit heavy on certain areas but even then it's it's, it's fine textures are fine textures are, uh, like render is fine but it's just too simple okay i understand that if this was for a product rendering or for rendering on the on the web that like it said there that's fine but again this is not the kind of stuff that people are going to stop and look at when they are browsing ArtStation, right? So you're not going to be able to catch the recruiter's attention and get a shot at, at, um, at getting noticed. This one, on the other hand, this one's very cool. Football VR game project. And the, what I'm seeing here is that you're already doing some some works, like some actual 3D work, like you're getting paid for. I, I relatively frequent, well, not frequently get these questions like when can you consider yourself to be a um what's the word a professional 3d artist and i would say there's a big difference between being a professional 3d artist and being a a really good 3d artist there are really good 3d artists that struggle a lot to get work and there are very like intermediate or, or um i don't know i'm not gonna say noob or something but do you, you once you get paid for it you're already technically a professional because you're getting paid for it if you just do it as a hobby and if you're just doing it because you like doing it then you might be a really good 3d artist but that doesn't 
immediately make you a professional 3D artist. Once you start getting paid for it and working on real world projects, even if the 3D is not as great, that already makes you part of the industry. Now, once you're there, which is a, an important step to be on, once you're there, the next thing that you need to look for is you need to try to improve. So you not only are a professional artist, but you're also a really good 3D artist with professional background, right? So this one right here, I understand that for VR, the limitations are quite big. I do think that we went a little bit too low. Be very careful with this things right here. That's a, that's a very common um, error that I see on the... Uh, on angles and actually I do want to show you how to fix that guys because one of the things that I hate about modeling or, or bad models that this one um, again not trying to be too mean but this one is definitely a bad model is that we need to look at the reference so if we look at the goalie post you're gonna see that usually they are 90 degree angles right like we have a pipe and it has a 90 degree uh, angles yeah we also have a back boy that's right we need to soften the edges because that's that's looking very very weird there we go Okay, so if you have a tube, right? The first thing I'm gonna do when I'm doing those sort of elements is I'm gonna reduce this to like eight sides to make it a little bit easier to work. Something like that. And uh, if we duplicate this and we rotate this 90 degrees, I know that what we need to do here is we need to combine both elements. But in order for them to combine properly and get the very like sharp corner, we need to find pretty much like a 45 degree angle. And there's a mathematical formula. I don't know it right now to be exact or to be precise. But I'm going to rotate this 45 degrees. And then, as you can see here, by doing that rotation, one of the things that's going to happen is that we're going to lose a little bit of volume. So we do need to create like an ellipse. So I'm going to scale this up on the X axis until the, the line on the top gets like back to straight line pretty much which is right around there i can't tell you exactly what the the measurement was right there but it's very important that we do follow that sort of like a uh, line why because now if we rotate this like this we're gonna be able to to get closer to the match that we're going for as you can see it's not perfect so i'm gonna have to like probably scale this even more it's right around there and I can lose the volume. I'll look for the, the exact volume later, my friends, because I don't have the exact, exact volume. So again, I'm just going to rotate this on the Y axis and just scale it. Now, oh, if we combine both of these objects and we delete the caps right there, we should have this corner. And if we just bridge this, we're gonna get that. And then what we can do even is just collapse that. It's gonna give us a very like sharp line. And then that collapse line, we can bevel it again. And have a really small fraction so that when we smooth, we get that nice like welded corner that we have right there. This is the kind of stuff that you wanna do for this one. And as you can see, the amount of polygons is still very low. Like this for VR is gonna work perfectly, perfectly fine. Like we don't need uh, like a lot of polygons. It's just a matter of understanding how the construction is made, okay? So one of, that's one of the things that I personally love about the 3D world is that the more you know about how things are, are made in the real world, the easier and the, and the nicer your objects are gonna look in the 3D world as well. So yeah, my friend, I would recommend like that, that one's fine. Like you can keep that one because it's a VR project. This one's also good as well. The level design, it's a simple one again. It's it's not too complex, but I see the sort of like candy land effect. Um, the gun, really good. At least on the thumbnail looks good. It seems like you did not abuse the metal edgeware, which is a very common thing that I see people do. For this particular one, we need to see a wireframe and ideally we want to see the textures as well, the texture maps, so that we can see how, how well you handle it. But then the, this other ones, like this potion, this axe and this others, they're not, I would say, up to the level of a portfolio. So I would definitely, definitely recommend that you fix those or, or improve upon those so that you have an, an even better portfolio. So keep the stadium, keep this land, keep, keep the gun and let's do more stuff. Like if you want to do this like a uh, like shoe, don't stop here like keep going add the uvs add the textures create a nicer render like one of the things that you need to understand and not only you everyone that's watching right now this is another like super secret of the 3d world when you're trying to work for a, a studio or when you want to be a professional artist it's not about 
it's not only about how good you can make an object is how consistent you are at making good things, right? Because I would, like, this is something that I was told, and now that I have the small studio, it's something that I follow. It's way better to have an artist that delivers 10 pieces at, let's say, a an 8 out of 10 quality, than to have one artist that delivers one piece at a 11 out of 10 quality, and then the rest of them are like a six, a five, a seven. That's very inconsistent. So yeah, that guy is gonna make uh, one amazing piece every couple of weeks, but all of the other pieces are gonna be very shitty. And on the other hand, you're gonna have one person that might not be doing the most amazing work all the time, but all of the pieces are good, 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 good. You guys remember the, the movie, uh, I think it was called Moneyball. If you haven't seen it, go watch it it's really good but it's a similar concept yeah this one right here they they're building like a baseball team and and this guy um played by um i always forget his name jonah hill he he comes up with a formula that says i'm gonna find the guys that are most consistent the guys that hit first base the most consistent and if we have a lot of those guys then it's going to be very easy to hit a lot of first bases and that's going to guarantee more uh like scores at the end we might not be doing a lot of home runs but we're going to be consistently getting people to run around the, the diamond right so so that's the same thing in the 3d world you want to make sure that all of your pieces are consistent um i'm gonna i'm gonna confess something to you guys Yesterday, I have an idea. I'll tell you about the idea later. But yesterday, or, or actually not yesterday, on Monday, I was I was recording a video for YouTube. I was doing a chess piece, a custom chess piece that I wanted to show you. I recorded that thing four times because every single time I was doing it, the video was wrong. I messed up. It was not working, and I knew I could upload it even with the with the mistakes and everything. But that quality, that consistency would go down because it's not going to be a good video. So at the end, I just decided to scratch it. I'm going to tackle that later because that was not getting to the quality that I know that I want to show people. So even even though I spent like six hours working on that video and I couldn't get anything out of it, that's how you learn. That's how you improve. It hurts a lot to, to do something like this, for instance, and be like, oh, I spent, I don't know, like one day, two days working on this. I need to upload it. No, you don't. You don't need to upload it because this is not really that good so since it's not that good it's just gonna hurt you more no no i didn't upload the video uh roma i i, I scratched the video because it's not it's not good <laughs> i i failed on that video so so that's why I, i'm not uh i'm not uploading that one just yet later on i will do it so be very careful guys again it's not just for for my friend here hasibu is for uh no, no sorry though. yeah yeah it was hasibu it was not only for him it's for for everyone now there's a very interesting thing here on the thumbnail on the thumbnail, my friend, you have a different model, like a, like an engine or something, and it's not here. So be careful with that as well. Like you always want to have all of your pieces, or at least all of the cool pieces up. Okay, let's go now with Voris. He says, "Hi, my name is Voris. I'm a 3D journalist from Russia, and I want to move from Project Time to Time. I want to move from Project Time to Time. Work for a stable studio. One. Anything I should improve or change in my portfolio." The thumbnail already looks pretty damn cool. Let's take a look. Okay, this is a little bit confusing again. Oh, Boris participated on our uh, weapon challenge with the knife. There you go, nice. So this is a little bit confusing because we got this shot right here of this like serpent and uh, and this guy's right here. This very like dystopian future or something. And then there's nothing here. So at first, when I saw the thumbnail, I thought you were going to be like a creature, like artist or something. I wouldn't recommend doing this. I know you might find this cool, like this piece cool. If you did it, okay, that's fine. Keep it. But if you did it, make sure you have it over here as well so that I can see it. Otherwise, it's very, again, like confusing to know whether or not you did this piece uh, or not. So the knife is perfect. This is really good. The presentation is very nice. As I told you on the competition, um, actually, you got full points on the design and full points on the uh, on the art, I think. It was a story that was very, like, simple i would say that that didn't help you as much and well actually it was the story and the design i think you got like four points on the design four points on the on the story and then five points on the on the technical side of things so so that one's good this one's good as well again it's a simple model but it's very very well done and for a flight simulator this is perfectly perfectly workable and then we have a couple of weapons Weapons are always a good idea. Careful with this kind of renders. Um, and we, we talked about this quite a bit on the on the on the weapon contest. 
Whenever you're doing a render, whenever you're showcasing whatever piece you're working on, it's very important that you always showcase the piece. <laughs> if we see this, you can see that there's a lot of wasted sp wasted space, like all of this empty space here, all of this empty space here, all of this empty space here. This has to do with something called composition. So the composition on this render is not working. It's not helping us. This one's a little bit better, but still, we have a lot of things right here. I would just zoom in and have the gun be in full display for us to appreciate. This one's a little bit better. This one's, again, a little bit better. Uh, although I do feel like you're changing the textures and I don't love these textures right here. So so be careful on, on this one, okay? We gotta be very, very careful here. So it's not a bad weapon. Now, another thing that we really, really need to see, and, and I do believe I told you that... No, you actually did include on the knife. It's uh, wireframes. We do need to see wireframes. Got another polished AK series with a couple of uh, variations. Again, careful on your renders. The guns look good. Like, I could definitely see these guns on a, on a game and, and then they look fine. But another thing is, I'm not sure what you're using to render. Looks like a Marma set, which is fine. Yeah, just be careful with the renders. The composition on your renders is hurting you a little bit, boys. Now, another thing that I see here is that you have some really cool stuff and then again, some like, meh, not so, not so cool. Uh, Roma says, hey, what if I have some questions about that weapon contest? Would you answer on them? Yes, of course. Just send me a message on Discord and I'll and I'll answer any questions you have, my friend. So, yeah, a bread, a bread render. I mean, it looks good. It looks interesting, but it's too simple, right? Like, this is, again, something that you can probably finish in a day. And the thing is, if you can finish it in a day, anyone else who's at your skill level should be able to finish it in a day as well. And unfortunately, that means that the piece is not going to, again like um, get as many views or as many interactions as you might want. Same for like this goggles right here. Like the low poly is very, very low poly. Nowadays, unless you're doing like a mobile game, you're not gonna be working with such a low quality or low quality on the on the geometry. I can see that the high poly has some very cool details that you baked into this thing, but we, we can definitely push things a little bit higher. This tank, same thing. And I know this was probably, oh, actually this was not that long ago, four months ago. So yeah. I understand that you're doing this in the style of BRDM2, or Osumia games. I haven't seen the game, but this is a very simple project. If you wanted to do it to show them that you can match their style, that's great. But don't have it on your portfolio, because it's, it's just going to, again, hurt you. Three-day fast modeling challenge. It's very noisy. I don't see really where the modeling is. It's a cool idea, but uh, I, I don't... It's uh, like the presentation, again, it's not helping too much. This one looks a little bit better. Get rid of all of this, like, fancy things like smoke and flares and things like that. And let me see some, again, some wireframes. Let me see some textures. Let me see the model just as it is. And these are, like, studio light. I'm actually going to be doing a, very soon, a studio light setup. And I'm going to give it away for free to you guys. So that way, if you just want to present your model, you, you don't have too many, too many issues there. In regards to your question, Boris, on, on how to jump from, from like a freelance project to a studio project, you definitely need to show a little bit more complex models because a lot of people out there can do guns, a lot of people out there can do vehicles, a lot of people out there can do props. So you need to show me something that not a lot of people can do, okay? That way, you're going to be a valuable asset and then studios are going to be more... Um, it's going to be a little bit easier to 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 get you a position somewhere another thing that's very important this is not only for boys it's for everyone out there guys you need to be very mindful that the 3d industry is a very cluster industry that means that there are going to be main hubs around the world where most of the work is being done los angeles vancouver seattle uh, of course in india japan china so if you're not in one city or in one area where there's a lot of 3d studios then getting a 3d position like a full-time position is going to be even harder for instance here in, in the city where i'm at saltillo we don't have students there's like two or three and 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 i'm uh i'm in one of them right so the thing is if if like i rarely open new positions on the studio because the amount of work that we get is not as big so that it requires more people and even though there are a lot of people here in saltillo that know 3d unfortunately they can't all fit in the in the positions that are available in the city so you might need to either do remote work or move to a city where there's more positions available so that's um, that's a, a sad part of, uh, of our world right now that sometimes you might need to do sacrifices and moving to a different place might be one of those sacrifices if you want to get into the industry. Okay, let's move on. And now with Dilfo, it says, hey, my name is 
me just okay i just want to make sure that i was recording i was getting scared there it says hey my name is dylan it started through the opening blender november 2022 so one year from now there you go so coming up on one one year i'm a personal trainer at the gym so i make my own hours and have probably averaged about 50 hours a week in 3d since then that's great i mean 50 hours is what you normally do as a, as a daytime job so that's cool my lease is ending here in a couple months. I'd love to know if you think I've refined the skill enough to get an entry-level position. If not, I would love to know what to work on next. A lot of your tutorial characters aren't on the portfolio, but out of the thousands of hours of resources I've consumed, yours has made the biggest impacts. Love you, brother. Love you too, my friend, and thank you for the kind words. Let's take a look. Probably gonna have to give me uh, uh, gym classes later because uh, <laughs> that's one of the things that I definitely need to to put my time into. Okay, so you did Thyros right here, and you did a really good job. Well, this is a different version, of course. This is a really cool one. I'm, I'm trying to look for the the specifics of like anatomy, which you nail quite nicely. Um, like the texture work looks good. The render is a little bit dark. I would push it just a little bit more, but you have a really, really nice like head and face right here for Thyros. So congratulations on that one. It's a, it's a shame that I can't, uh, I can't see the, all of the comments from this uh, course anymore, but I'll be doing a new character next year. Um, like another like full fantasy character series or something. So yeah, this is good, man. This is a really good one. Again, topology wise, we're good. You're following the, the rules and the and the workflow that I show. It's a little bit high on polycon, but this can always be optimized. That's why um I, I get this question quite a bit. It's like, should we really worry about polyframe or polycon? Should we worry about the texture resolution? And the answer is yes and no. Yes, you need to keep it in mind. Like if he had shown me here a thyrus with half a million triangles in, in resolution, then that's definitely way too much. Well, 1K triangles, it's very common nowadays. Like even like a Kratos from God of War is gonna have something similar around that uh, thing. If you add hair, it increases the poly count. So I know that if uh, we're gonna be using, let's say this character for, for a mobile game, Game. Of course, the, the, the mobile game is not going to handle this amount of poly count and this uh, 4K maps, but I know the 4K maps can be exported out as 1K maps, and I know this 108,000 triangles can be like reduced to about probably like 40 uh, if we really want to go super low poly. So it's, it's better, I would say, to do a very nice piece for your portfolio, like this one right here, and then optimize if needed, than to do a crappy piece and not optimize. I tried on the other two to have a lower poly guy. Yeah, no, and that's fine, man. Like the the axis is is looking good. Let's let's take a look uh, at the other ones. This one's good. Uh, Valira Sanguinar is she from like World of Warcraft? Probably right. I think I've seen her in World of Warcraft or something. She looks good. The face is good. It, it, it's tricky. Uh, you, uh, I'm gonna say why. Um, sometimes when when you're doing male characters. It depends, but some people have it easier doing male characters and some people have it easier doing female characters. And sometimes switching between one or the others can be a little bit tricky because either your female characters look a little bit too male-like or your male characters look a little bit too female-like, right? So in this particular case, I think you balance it nicely. Like she doesn't look bad, looks really nice. I do feel like some armor pieces on the sculpt look a little bit weird, but then on the textures, you were able to create a very nice um, like change there on the, on the colors. Let's see, 90k triangles again, uh, a little bit high, but not like horribly high. Capes are usually just one sided. I can see here that you sculpted both sides. Please tell me you didn't retopo both sides or you use your measure because I would kill myself if I had to retopo that cape on both sides. But uh, yeah, this is good, man. Great reference page. I do see that the reference, you're using this one, right? Like the red, and I, I, do, I do remember seeing this character. I would probably saturate the red a little bit more because it looks a little bit dull on the, on the color. Uh, but it's a good one, man. This is a really, really cool character. What did you use for the hair? Did you use action or did you use hair cards? I think you're there in the comments so or in the chat. So let me know um, if you use hair cards or, or action. Because hair looks really good. And then I was seeing this one. This one is looking amazing, man. Amazing. This one's looking really, really good. Yeah. Really good, man. Yeah, it looks like hair cards. I also thought they looked like hair cards. Yeah, this is really good, man. I think the proportions are really good. The armor looks sick. The topology is perfect, like very optimized. It's a little bit dense on the face. I would probably just reduce it there a little bit. Super clean topology. Yeah, man, like this is portfolio worthy, like totally portfolio worthy. And uh, again, I'm not sure where exactly you are in the world, but if you are um, in any of the hubs, it's it's going to be very, I would say it's going to be fairly easy for you to find an, an entry position because you got a, a great character portfolio. 
Perfect, yeah. And if you don't mind moving, uh, it's even, it's going to be even easier. Because this level of detail that you're getting here, it's it's just amazing. But this 4K textures, yeah, they're 4K. How many how many maps we have here? Okay, well, yeah, we do have four maps. So this will be a little bit more for probably like a cinematic or something like that. Um, games, it's, it's a little bit too much. It's not the end of the world. Like, you can still handle it if it's going to be like a Street Fighter where you're only going to have like two characters on screen. That's fine. But yeah, this is very good, man. Very, very, very good. So amazing work, Dylan. This is really nice. Um, I guess my only advice, if I had to give you an advice, uh, would be to do something a little bit more sci-fi because you got a lot of medieval and fantasy stuff. So if you can do a sci-fi character or like a modern character, like a soldier or, you know, like a Navy SEAL or something like that, that's going to showcase that you have the range because I don't see a lot of, uh, you have hard surface stuff here, but not hard surface like, uh, like in guns and armor and things like that. Um, like real, well, not not real, like modern armor. So maybe adding a little bit of that would be would be great. This is an amazing piece, by the way. If you haven't rigged it, try rigging it. There's this AccuRig um, plugging that you can use, and it's like an auto rigger thing. Um, because um, seeing this thing move would be amazing. It's a very very cool character, this Aatrox. So yeah, congratulations, man. Thanks for the support. You're one of our adventurers here in the Discord. For those of you that don't know, uh, if you are a sub here in Twitch, or if you um, if you follow us and stuff like that, you get special special status on our Discord as well. We even have a special mage zone for the for the top contributors. So thanks a lot for all of the support. We're one person away from our goal today. So if you're not following and you're watching and you want to help us get to that goal, just follow. We're right here. Yeah, make someone can also rig it. That's right. Okay, we're now gonna go with Kanaka Mamedi Pravin. There we go. Venlo, thanks for the sub, man. Thank you very much. Says, hello, sir. I'm a big fan of you. I learned a lot of things from your tutorial videos. Thanks for making quality videos with great information. You're the best teacher on the internet. I'm not sure about that, but, but thank you. This is my portfolio. I'm trying to get hired in modeling or animation. Let's take a look. Okay, we got a lot of stuff. Let's see all of them. Okay, again, so we got a couple of things that are, at first glance, not not uh, amazing, but I understand what you're going for. So this kind of animations, I see them a lot in Instagram and they're fun, right? Um, however, be very careful here. They're, they're you're, you're like spawning this spheres instead of just like letting them roll. See how they disappear once they get there and then appear again. So you're probably missing a frame or something, okay? Um, it, it's very important that you, if you're going to be doing this kind of animations, it's very important that you make sure that it looks very clean all throughout. And another thing that's very important is the render. Again, this looks like just an HDR, like a very flat render. And in today's video on YouTube, so when we finish the live stream, you guys can go check that one out. One, that's one of the things that I tell you. One of the most important things about an HDR is that you do not let the HDR do the whole job. You're going to use the HDR, but then you're going to input your own sort of like a process on the lights and you're going to decide where the lights are coming from to get an even nicer effect. So careful with that. I would probably take out all of those simple renders like this uh, marble render right here. Again, it's fun. It's nice. Instagram, you're going to get likes. TikTok, people in TikTok love this sort of stuff. But um, but for a portfolio, no. Nah, this is not what you want in your portfolio. And you can see it right here. Look at this. You got zero likes, 23 views. So 23 people saw this. And even though likes are not really a way to measure how successful something is, it's it's um, it's a little bit of... Uh, of uh, it's, a, it's a good... like. Gauge, I think that's the word. It's a good way to measure how successful or not one of your elements is. Is it too late to give? What do you mean, uh, Black Ops? To give what? To to submit your portfolio? No, you can still submit. I'm gonna be receiving until we finish today's stream. Now you do have some really nice projects like this one right here. This one's good. Again, what are you missing? Render. The best thing I can recommend, Praveen, is go check the render video that I'm uploading or it's uploaded today and use that to improve your renders because look at this, even animation and everything, but the render is very, very flat, very boring. So we need to improve on that. This robot also looks very cool. One of the things that we do need to see on this robots is we need to see the wireframes, okay? I can see that you're using UDIMS, that's fine, but we need to see, oh, okay, there we go. So we do have a wireframe, perfect. Yeah, so other than that, um, just quick advice, remember on the edgeware, metal edgeware, the metal edgeware should not affect everything uniformly. I can see that you just added like a, like a metal edgeware pass on everything, and that just makes it look very um, superficial, right? It doesn't make it any, any interesting because every single part of the object has the same amount of, um, what's the word, the same amount of, of damage. 
Uh, I I would personally don't wouldn't use this castle as my main picture. Again, the, the main picture. I'm not sure if Art Station does this automatically, but you should always be very aware of how you present yourself to the world. So I would take this one out, and I would probably just use the robot. This one, the Carbonator. It's, it looks way way better. In simple elements like this one and like the gaming chair. Again, if you're not really adding much to the... Well, I mean, this one is fine. But I, I think this is from a tutorial. I, I feel like I've seen a lot of these chairs lately. So it's probably a tutorial out there to, to show you how to do it. But again, it's not an asset that's like exciting or, or cool, right? So you gotta be very careful on what kind of... Um, of what kind of projects you add to your portfolio. But yeah, I think, again, my best advice for you, man. Render. You need to improve the render. Let's now go with Akash Kumar. It says, hello, how are you doing? Here's my portfolio. I want to become a character artist for games. Can you give any advice whether I'm heading in the right direction and what else should I include to the job? Hopefully in the USA. Okay, let's take a look. So we got a female anatomy study. Proportions are okay. Um, but the studies I don't include on my portfolios. The reason why I don't include studies on my portfolios is because since they're studies, they're usually not production ready pieces and therefore portfolio is not going to help you as much. This armor looks good though. Like if this is the armor for that character, this looks good. The first render was amazing. Like I would like to see more shots with this sort of like clean render illumination because this one's too dark. Very, very common mistake with renders. They make them too, too dark. Proportions are not bad. It's definitely a little bit on the, on the bigger side, but it's, it's fine. Texture wise, it's a little bit noisy, uh, like a little bit grungy on certain areas. I will probably keep them clean or add some more cut lines. You, you probably have seen how they design the superhero armors nowadays for Marvel movies and things. And there's always a lot of sections because having just a big area right here with nothing makes it very difficult to appreciate what it is. So you're going to see like cuts following the contours of the muscles, uh, just cuts separating where the things flex and stuff like that. Kelfor with the UV mapping as well, you can see here on her on her butt how the UV mapping is it's not uniform, it's not like symmetrical. And usually cloths are cut, like the patterns of cloths are cut in a way where things just line up very nicely. It's a very minor detail, but it's uh, it's important. Ah, this is way too dense, man. Way, way too dense. For a game character, this can be simplified quite a bit. It's not a bad sculpt though. Like it's a, it's a cool sculpt, it's a cool model here. But this one right here, it's it's not great because it's very dense. And the problem with this very dense mesh, and you can see that they're also not as uniform, is when you rig this, you're going to have a lot of deformation issues. A lot. So you don't want to make your, your rigger's life uh, impossible. And then we have this one, Saint Flint. Here, the proportions are not okay. And one of the first things that I see is the forearm and the hands. Look at that. Super tiny hands. <laughs> That's not the way to go. Same for the feet. Super tiny feet. For you, I would recommend my um, the the Seabrush course, the stylized character creation, or, or what's it called? Seabrush for character artist course. It's a stylized character. It's this like very cool demon oni character, uh, comic book style, pretty much. And um, and we go over proportions quite a bit. We go over anatomy and things like that. I would say, again, being perfectly honest, that we still need to work a little bit more. And especially because you mentioned that you want to work in the US. The US market is like the top market, one of the top markets in the world. So it's like if you were telling me, I, I like to play basketball and I want to play in the NBA, right? So that's the top leagues right there. If you want to get there, you really need to put in the time. You really need to put in the effort to improve your anatomy, improve your work and get as close as possible to that level of quality. Oh, there you go. Sarn just like posted the link to the to the character course. All of the links are available on the on the Discord as well, my friends. We have three courses right now. We got the Blender course for weapons. We got the Seabrush course for characters, and we just recently released an introduction to Maya course, which is for anyone who wants to jump into the 3D world and you don't know where to start. That's the perfect way to do it. So let's now go to uh, Vala Krishna says hi sir really appreciate what you're doing i'm focusing on becoming a prop artist in the video game industry can you give me tips on how i can make my models game ready also i would like to know if my works will be considered game ready assets thank you let's take a look let's see oh there you go i just got a message from from, from evgen and uh, he's showing me the the seer the, the ian mckellen thing i'm not gonna show it in the stream don't worry but uh it's looking good man it's looking good okay cool I think I've seen yours before. I'm not sure if I saw it um, when we were on the on the other channel, but I, I do feel like I've seen these things before. So how do we know if the models are game ready? 
there's usually a couple of factors. First of all, the texture quality. This one looks amazing. This looks very, very cool. Very, very nice. And there you go, the poly count. The very nice, clean poly count. Simplified, only where we need it. Low poly effect, so, oh, sorry. That's great. This is good, good, man. Luggage. This one's good as well. Do we open it? That's another important thing. Usually assets, you want to be able to model them in such a way that you can open them or, or interact with them, like animate them and stuff like that. Fire extinguisher. Careful with the metal edge where it's a little bit everywhere. It's again, it's just a sort of like simple model. It's something that anyone can do relatively fast. I actually used to do a, an exercise like this when I was teaching at university. So yeah, I like your presentation though. It's, it's interesting. I, I haven't seen it like this before. But it is a little bit enticing. <laughs> it's nice. Um, I would suggest maybe moving the words either lower or to a corner so that we can see more of the model because it, it, it feels a little bit clickbaity. Like, oh, I'm, I'm covering the model a little bit so you click on it and go in there, which could be an interesting strategy. But um, but yeah, some people are just not gonna fall for it. This one's good. The bump is definitely a little bit too intense and uh, the rust here is a little bit too intense as well. It's a good model. I like it. And the render is also good. It's a, it's a clean render so that we can appreciate every single thing. A good triangle count. So your question when, when I was looking at this, Seth, where is it? Uh, ba -ba -ba. Wow. Um, there we go. So are your elements game ready? I would say yes. I would say this are indeed game ready. However, one thing that I'm seeing is that you have a lot of single elements. And usually for game artists, one of the things that you want to do is do something like this, like this laundry room, where you do a lot of assets and you present them in the best possible way. I'm not sure when you did this because the light doesn't look like Lumen, like a bouncing around and stuff. It still looks very fakey. But doing another like full scene with a lot of props might be the best way to do it or to 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 get your name out there because yeah you have some really really nice models man like this is a portfolio that i could easily see from from some of my peers coming out of Noman. so yeah this is good always include the poly count at somewhere so that we know how many polygons it has because for instance this one also looks quite nice now you are doing a lot of like boxy simplistic elements doing something a little bit more organic maybe because i don't see a lot of seabrush work right here i'm not sure if for instance these pillars were done in seabrush kind of looked like they were a little bit but the, they look a little bit lumpy so i'll probably take this one out to be honest and even this one these are some old works and right now this ones on the top are looking a little bit better careful with fan arts fan arts uh, as i've mentioned before they can be like a double-sided sword or a double-sided axe huh? see what i did there <laughs> so what happens here is that since we have the game model to compare to, it can become a little bit difficult to match that level, right? Like, I'm not sure if Grossetti was the one that did the axe for, for the game, but the thing is that the, the, the quality var is very high. So unless you can get really close to it, people are always going to look at this as like the like the cheap knockoff, right? So in that particular case, it's going to hurt you more than it's going to help you. My advice, do you want to do a God of War Leviathan axe and do your own version of the God of War Leviathan, or like a fan art, but you use your own design and you do um, you do your own stuff as well. We don't have as much people in chat. Well, there is the chat, so you guys are welcome. We are also just one follower away from our um, from our element. Yes, it's the middle of the week. It's very early, so I I'm just want I just want to make sure that we had the uh, the portfolio ready for all of those that submitted, and I couldn't cover on the last um, last Friday. So let's go with Hanzo. Hanzo says, I honestly don't have quality models yet in my art station. I just want to share my work and just get some feedback. Okay. Yeah. So I can see three busts right here. The Batman, the Evil Head Sculpture, and the Head Bust. My advice is don't open your portfolio. I mean, there's... There's several schools of thought there, but I would say don't open your portfolio in our station until you have some really, really good stuff ready for, um, ready for, for like submission, right? Like really good quality production work. And if you want to share this kind of stuff, again, Facebook, LinkedIn, even Twitter, or it's not called X, um, Instagram, like all of those places are better to share this sort of like progress of your of your art journey rather than your portfolio, because then what could happen is you create a very cool piece 
and it's ready for portfolio and you upload it and then it's going to be at the side with these other pieces and if you forget to that to delete this ones it's going to look very weird to have really ugly pieces or not ugly but really like beginner pieces and then like a very finalized piece so when you're at this point um hanzo i would recommend share it on the on the works in progress channel share it here on the 3d workshop channel that we have on our on our discord but wait a little bit more until we have it ready for our portfolio okay that would be my advice right there for hanzo we now got a big cram a good modeler let's take a look okay so we see four models this is a great model cars are always a good challenge for modelers good render a little bit noisy um, noise noise is see i i don't i used to forgive noise a couple of uh, years ago whenever i saw a portfolio because back then it was difficult to have a strong computer to do a lot of samples. But nowadays, Blender, Maya, Marmoset, every single render engine has a denoiser included. So you should denoise always. Okay, so try to denoise this thing. It does look a little bit bubbly. It doesn't look as sharp as a, a car. So you probably are missing a couple of edge loops. But even then, it's a, it's a good one. A wireframe could really help with this uh, model right there. Uh, Bikram. Triceratop. Hmm... No, I don't love this one. And the reason why I don't love it is because it's relatively simple. Like, it's just cones, a couple of cylinders and spheres. So it's not really helping your portfolio compared to the other ones that I see right here. This one's really good. Like, see the difference? Like, that elephant or that triceratops right there was not as good. But this one's really, really nice. This is like a, like a drone or something. You follow the metal edge work because I, I see that you did break it up a little bit. This one, the only thing that's missing is, again, a little bit of a better render. Modeling is fine. Um, I mean, for like a cinematic or something like that, this could perfectly, perfectly work. I would play a little bit more with the material variation because we have a lot of like this army green paint everywhere. So with that, maybe some carbon fiber, maybe some like more metal exposed or something, just because it, it looks very dull um, color wise. So it's very important to, to add some variation to make it really, really shine. Play a little bit, add a, a, a mesh light inside of that one so that it actually glows and you see light coming from it. That will be another another important one. And that little warning sign that you have there on the back, it's very clean. Compared to every other part of the texture, that one's very clean. So I would add a dirt layer to that one to just like break it up a little bit as well. Then Iron Man. This one's cool. Uh, but again, we fall into the, the fan art category of... Are we really matching it? Um, the metal looks very dark, and that's probably because we need more light on the scene. I know you're using this HDRI. The model's not bad, but again, it's not as good as the one that we see in the movies, right? So people are going to compare your stuff to the movie quality. Also, the more famous the thing you're doing is... The more famous the thing you're doing is, for instance, Iron Man, the higher the quality bar is going to be. I'm going to show you a, a perfect example. So let's say I wanted to do a Marvel character, right? I'm a huge Marvel fan. I have a lot of comics back here. So let's say we want to do a Marvel character. The most famous one is probably Spider-Man. So if I do a Spider-Man fan art, everyone and their mothers <laughs> have seen Spider-Man at some point. So if my Spider-Man doesn't look good, they're going to immediately know that, hey, that Spider-Man looks weird. So I don't like it. However, if I do something like, I don't know, Dr. Doom, I'm a huge fan of Dr. Doom, not a lot of people have done Dr. Doom, right? Like, Dr. Doom is a, it's a very famous character, but there's not a lot of 3D renditions of him. As you can see, most of these are concept arts and things like that. So if I do my version of Dr. Doom, they don't have a lot of, like, mental images to compare it to. So even if I, like, don't have a perfect result at the end, it's still going to be a really good product just because it's a little bit less known. There's another one. For instance, I get this a lot. It's like, I want to do Superman. And I mean, Superman is cool, but if you want to do something like Superman, you can do, for instance, Hyperion, which is like the Marvel Superman. And it's pretty much Superman. It's just anatomy, a cape, and a logo, but it's a slightly different. So people are not going to judge you as harshly. And you could even like open more more minds like people are going to be more open to seeing something a little bit more refreshing a little bit newer than just another 3d model of superman another 3d model of batman uh so it, it can be again it's like a double-edged sword so if you do it really 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 good it's going to give you a lot of points if you don't it's gonna it's gonna hurt you more than you might think i remember this because when i was applying to noman uh this was like several years ago this was in 2012 Whew. Well, more than 10 years ago, when I applied there, I submitted a Joker piece. I did a Joker in pastel colors on like this big canvas. And the, and the girl at the admissions office, she was like, oh, Joker, 
And she was like, hey, it's cool. I mean, it's a good technique and you did a good job, but I've seen thousands of jokers, so yours doesn't impress me. It's like, oh, that hurts. <laughs> but it, it was real, right? Like, if they see it, and then I show, I remember, I do I have it right here? Let me see. Because this was like a long time ago and uh, I had a block spot. I, I never like continued to, there you go. So look at this, 2014, my name, the name of my company, it's all the way back to 2014. So when I went to Nomen, I applied for the, the program. And again, as I was telling you, I did this Joker piece. It's not here, the Joker piece. But then I showed this piece right here, this super simple alien that I did in, in, in ZBrush and Photoshop. And again, the girl at admissions, she was like, oh, yes. I like this one way better than your Joker. It's like, why? Like, I, I, it took me like two hours to do it. It was not difficult. And she's like, it's not that it was difficult. It's that it's yours. It's something that only you had in your mind and you made it possible, right? Like, it's not, you didn't copy any concept. It's your creativity and it's your sort of like artistic style being like placed in this piece and it was like that's what i want to see because if i see that there's potential in this i know that if you go through our program you're going to be able to do amazing things here and um yeah that's uh <laughs> that's what i did and yeah this is some some history some old history from uh, some of my early works at no moon and um and stuff so you can look it up it's abrahamleal.blogspot.com this was again like nine years ago there you go like 2014 so almost 10 years ago so yeah that was, that was Bikram. Let's now go with Sanjeev says, hello, here's my portfolio. I want to become a 3D journalist. I've been applying for jobs almost for a year now, but only getting rejections with only regret to inform emails. I've been asking the recruiters for feedback so that I can improve, but no reply yet. And please let me know what else should I include to land a job. Yeah, so that's the thing. Um, Unfortunately, the world's very competitive, right? Like, there's a lot of uh, challenges uh, in the in the job part of the world, in the professional part of the world, and and recruiters, their job is to look at things, just tell you if you're good or not, and then just move on. They have a lot of work, so I don't blame them when they don't answer, and it's always very frustrating as a, as an artist not to to know why you weren't picked or why you weren't considered. But one of the things was we have this portfolio review so that I can help you with that, of course. But it, it should always be a sort of like self-reflection thing. Like, what do I see myself or what is it that I want to do? And how far am I am from, from that point, right? So what I see here, for instance, is a, a nice sculpt. Interesting textures, not a great render. The, the render, again, very flat right there. This one, it's a cool, um, it's a cool concept you did manage to capture i would say the essence but it's not the greatest uh, it's not the greatest concept to be honest so so it's it's very important when we pick a concept and i do have a video um around there on youtube it's called how to pick how to pick a project when you pick a project you need to be very mindful of what is it that you want to showcase with that project right do you i want to showcase my modeling skills do i want to showcase my rendering skills do i want to showcase my texturing skills like the project that you pick has to be a way to show how good of an artist you are in a particular area. Um, Toasted says, is there a way that you quickly check my portfolio but off stream? It's just because I want to know if I should remove one or two of the projects. I will do that, man, but I'll do that after stream. Just send me a message on Discord, please. Send me a link to the portfolio and I'll get back to you as soon as I, as I can, okay? Okay, so yeah, like this gun looks good. Modeling wise, it's, it's fine. In you know, a little bit blocky, but it's it's cool. I like this texture a little bit more. Actually, it looks more interesting. But we need to see a a a wireframe. There we go. There's the wireframe. So it's a little bit dense. This is not optimized for games. Could definitely be more optimized. And I think that could be one of the reasons. Um, especially because you say you want to be a props artist, an environment artist. If it's for games, it's different than if it's for for film. So you should also try to define what kind of stuff you want. Probin. What's up, man? Welcome. So, I mean, this this one looks, again, okay, but it's very empty. So if you're going to do something like this, I would say focus on a corner, focus on one shot, on one part of the scene, and really dress it up. Like, add a lot of assets, add a lot of, like, story, like, a little bit of storytelling, because right now this looks like a very empty effect. It's a very cool one, so if I, if I needed someone to do a lot of modular buildings and things like that, and you tell me that you did do all of these things, then this would be very cool. Now, you said you worked tirelessly here for three days to bring this, and, and that's fine, but if it's only three days, 
I mean, it's impressive that you were able to get this into three days, but portfolio pieces, at least when I was at school, it took us at least three weeks. So if you did this in three days, imagine what you could do in three weeks, right? I know sometimes we don't have all that time to, to invest into a project, but it's very important that we try to make it, especially for our portfolio. PSP portable, it's a nice concept. A little bit blocky and the problem with this one is that you're you're not only doing some technical 3d stuff you're also trying to design your own playstation so one of the things that i see is the arrows they do not match the ps controller so if we look for a ps controller you're gonna see that the size of the arrows has a specific size they have a specific roundness they have a specific like everything so that kind of stuff if they were to make a PS like version, they would definitely, definitely have the same arrows and the same buttons for familiarity. So when this portfolio review is gonna be uploaded in YouTube, I'm not sure if tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, I need to check the schedule, but it's gonna be there in the next couple of days. So in case you wanna check it out or you miss one of the, of the guys. Okay, so by the way, is the music too loud? I'm not sure if the music's too loud. I mean, I've already recorded like full hour, right? But. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's still i'm just gonna lower it a little bit there you go so yeah my advice and gif is, is as follows first you need to pick pieces you need to pick portfolio pieces that are going to showcase the things that you want to do so if you want to do props i want to see a prop like a really interesting cool prop okay and if you want to do environments i want to see a full environment but a really cool full environment even if it takes you a full month to do it so that we can see all of the things we need to see plants we need to see trim textures we need to see a tileable textures we need to see water simulation or like like water moving and things like that like if we see all of those things in a piece then that means that we're going to be in a very good position okay that's uh that's a very very part important part of the of the production now i'm gonna give you one more tip because you've you're telling me here that you've been trying to look for a job for the past year this is a little bit more of uh into like the entrepreneur like entrepreneurship sort of thing but if you feel like you already have an offer like you're like i know 3d i can do something go ask your friends i'm sure you have some friends that are starting their business or that they have a small business and tell them hey can I do some work for you? Can I do some 3D work for you? Because that sort of 3D work is going to help you. Again, get your name out there. People are going to ask for you if you do a good job, of course. And that could open some doors that are going to be interesting. I'm going to show you another example, another history. So when I was starting, I uh, a friend of my dad asked him if I could do some animations for their site. And I did this. It's just like, a, it's even my voice. If you look at this page, it's even my voice talking like this, like super broadcasty thing. And it's a very simple animation. I think I did this in Maya and um, I don't even, I didn't even like texture things. It's just like very basic industrial sort of like animations. I don't even remember how much they paid me for it. They did pay me. That's important. You need to ask for payment, of course, or for some sort of like uh, interchange of favor or something. And um, and it's a very simple thing. Like I'm sure anyone who, who takes like a basic 3D course is, is able to do this. And this is the sort of thing that a lot of industries, it might not be the entertainment industry, but a lot of industries are asking for this sort of thing because it just looks nice and it helps their brand, right? So ask around and see who has something or, or find a friend of yours that has a product a little store or something that you feel like you could help by doing a couple of renders a couple of animations and try to find again sort of like a, a fair interchange maybe not money maybe exposure but like hey i don't know just putting an example out there maybe i have a friend who has a coffee shop right i'm gonna do a very nice little coffee render scene and i want you to give me a shout out every week for the next I don't know, like month or two months. And that way people are going to know that I'm a 3D artist and people might contact you to get more work done. That goes, again, a little bit more into the entrepreneurship or like freelance sort of thing, but, uh, but that's it. Will the portfolio video be uploaded in two parts, Praveen? I'm not sure because it's going to be a long one. So probably, yeah. I think the first one was like an hour and we're already one hour and 17 minutes. So I'm not exactly sure, but it's probably going to be two parts. Okay, so that was Sanjeev. Let's go now with uh, Mikael. Says, I would love to work as a 3D artist for environment or props. I would like to know what am I missing to be able to land work in a studio, freelance, or contract. Let's take a look. Oh, I, I remember yours. I remember... Uh, did you do this coins? I think you did this coins. I'm not sure if you showed it to us in our... In the... Um, what's the word? In the... Um, in the Discord. Okay, so this is a lot of like graphic design, composition, things like that. This is really cool. You don't really need this on your portfolio. I mean, for me, it's always very interesting to see this sort of thing. But for a recruiter, 
I don't know. You might get slightly different thing. I like that you named this school wars. So if people look at your portfolio, they're gonna find that one. I, I do remember uh giving you feedback because I do remember this piece. And uh the thing that I was telling you about this piece is that it's a very empty piece again like we don't have a lot of stuff we you have some cool assets so for instance this sofa i would just use this sofa as a single prop don't include it on the whole scene i know i usually tell people include it in the whole scene but in this case the scene is hurting you more than it's helping you so i would probably include the sofa as a single um as a single portfolio piece and yeah i also remember talking about this one and about how we can make each individual asset a separate uh like important one this one is looking very nice. Like, I like the, the composition and the light on this one. I do feel like the there's a little bit too much of surface on the on the snail. But I like this one. Was it Blender? Yeah, it's Blender. This grass is very Blender-y. Um, a couple more stones, maybe. A couple more rocks. Yeah, it's, a, it's a good one. It's not as complex, but again, the image looks very nice. So like the thumbnail looks very, very cool. And you probably see that in the in the amount of views and likes that you have. This one's this one, uh, the modeling is fine. I think the textures and the render need a little bit more work. How many portfolios do we have? Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We got ten more portfolios. I'm gonna be moving a little bit faster. We are right now at uh, ba, 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 this, uh, this is Mikhail, Mikhail S. So yeah, I think we need to improve a little bit on our texturing and our presentation, Mikhail. So my advice, again, check the video from today, which is the, the how to render things. Like on this one right here, the shadow is very strong. I usually recommend increasing the scale of the light so that the shadow is a little bit softer because this kind of like super harsh shadow you're only gonna get with a spotlight with like a like an artificial spotlight the sun even if you go out in the middle of the day there's always gonna be a little bit of a blur on the shadows and we don't have that right now another thing is we need to see a complex asset the most complex thing you have right now is the gun we need to see especially if you want to be an environment artist and uh, focusing in military we need to see a big gun like an ak-47 like a Gat gatling gun like a tank like something big that shows that you know the process with a complex piece i know complex pieces can be very intimidating very daunting but hey if you wanna if you wanna be noticed you need to do something that's like completely above everyone else right so if everyone is doing guns and you do a freaking tank then your tank is gonna be it's gonna be seen right like if you do a spacecraft or if you do like an exosuit or something that's when when things can get really interesting we're now with ambu krishnan digital sculptor says hi there i'm krish and i love to do concept and sculpting and here is my portfolio cool so concept wise um again it's 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 uh, it's it's complicated it's not very easy to be to do the concepts and then do the own your own models on the on the pipeline you're usually gonna either be doing someone else's concept or you're gonna be doing the concept and someone else is gonna be doing the character unless you're working on a very very small studio this one's cool i like this this like fairy but again it's a study right it's a work in progress so all of the work he's in progress i would probably take them out so to be honest at this girl right here this two right here the finger i will probably take them out same for this one if it's not finished it just just say hey it's a work in progress or or just don't upload it yet upload it until it's really really finished if it's finished if you don't want to do or work on this anymore at least do a clay render we have a clay render video on the youtube and um and we're going to be able to do it Evil Fry, who's, uh, what, what portfolio was yours? Let me know in the uh, in the chat and, and I'll take a quick look back to, to just give you the quick pointers. So the Axel Lawton, this one's very cool. I, I like the, the idea of the, of the concept. I think I've seen something like this before, but this one's cool. The thing that's killing you is, again, the render. It's a very boring render, so we need to improve the render. Ideally, I would like to see a full retopology, proper textures, all of these things to make sure that this one looks nice. And an ogre. This one looks cool. Again, I can imagine this in like a like a fantasy whimsical thing. There, there's some of the other things that we need to fix. I would recommend for you again the stylized zebrash course so that um so that you can get something cool. Let's see, evil fry four before this one. So one, two, three, four. Uh, it's Hanso. Evil fry, you're Hanso, or you are Bala Krishna. Which one is yours? Okay. 
yeah, Hanzo. So my my main advice for you was that these are really cool, and I understand that you're starting your 3D journey. I would not include this in my portfolio, and I would rather you share them on your socials, like uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff, so that people know that you're getting into 3D. But these are not like portfolio pieces yet, so you will need to to improve upon them a little bit more. And the problem is later on when you do really cool stuff, which I'm sure you're gonna be doing. If you upload that very cool stuff and at the side of that cool stuff, you got this guys right here, it might confuse people. OK, so it might look weird to have like a really, really cool project. And then this three like uh, practice projects or, or learning projects. So so just be very careful. And there's no rush on opening a portfolio. I, I guess that's one of the fear that people have, like, oh, I'm starting my 3D world. I should have a portfolio in our station because everyone has a portfolio in our station. You want a portfolio in our station when you're ready to be hired. Right. So if you're just learning, if you're just a student until you have really, really cool projects, I would say you can wait on the art station. Do post online on your socials again, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, so that people know that you're doing 3D. And once you submit your portfolio, they're like, hey, I'm ready for work. That's when people are going to be going into your art station. OK, so that was Krish. Now we're going to go with Pradip says, I'm trying to become an environment artist. Also like to specialize in weapons. Currently, I'm doing 3D illustration. Interesting. We're learning environment art. It would be great if you give me tips on how to light my environment scenes better. Cool. I mean, this this weapon looks very nice. I like that katana. This one looks good. I actually just did a course, like a Maya course, about this sort of like style, this sort of like whimsical style. So it's very, very important to to keep it simple. I would say you wanna you don't wanna overdo it with light. So I'm not sure how many lights you're using here, but it looks very bright, right? If you wanna have a little bit more of, a, of an interesting effect, let me show you. I don't like using my work to to give examples because it feels like a bit too self-serving. But uh, in this particular case. I literally just finished a project that has this sort of like look to it. So here. So this was the, the pirate, the Maya project that we're doing right now. And uh, in the beginning, I just used an HDRI. And as you can see, it looks OK. And as we start uh, building it, it looks uh, it looks interesting, right? With all of the shaders and all of the colors and everything. But the real change happens here. Like this is just a basic HDRI. There's absolutely nothing else. And then when we really start playing with lights, this is what we can achieve, like a really like a nice glow up. Just it, it's about being very precise on where and why you want your lights to be in that particular position and with that particular intensity. So in this particular case, you can see that I created a light right around here. It's a very warm light hitting the front of the house and we get this very nice shadows over here. They're not completely dark because I have a field light on this other side to fill in the scene. And then we have a rim light on this back side. This is exactly what we talked about on today's video. And that's why I made today's video, because I was like, I know we're going to get a lot of render questions. And that render tip that I show you on YouTube today, it's like the best one that you can use to, to improve your renders. I actually think that's the name of the video, right? Like improve your renders says, yeah, that was a mistake. Backboy says, I opened the art station after doing like five comps for people and the stuff that I have there from two, three years ago has nothing to do. Yeah, just delete them, man. If you're if they're still there, just delete them. Uh, Abel Fry says, how about posting work that you got from courses? I had done a character creation masterclass before, but I did not post in the art station due to being unsure. Yeah, I mean, you can post it, but if they're very well known, like, uh, like things, people are going to know. And here's the thing, like, let me show you real quick. Like if I look for Thyros, right? which is the the one that I did. Let's see. Or actually, if I look for my name, Abe Leal, I'm going to see a lot of things for Abraham Leo, because I've seen this right here. There we go. So all of these pieces are people that have, that have taken my courses and they submit their stuff, right? So we got the soldier, this other soldier, the old demon, the axe, like a lot of like things that people have done thanks to the tutorials that I've, uh, I've uh, uploaded. But the problem is, it's very difficult, very, very difficult for someone to get to a really good level when it's the first time that they're doing it. So let me and, and hopefully I'm not like uh, I don't, don't want to like talk shit about anyone. Right. But let's use this one as an example. So this was the result from the from the tutorial I did. This was uh, like, I don't know, like three years ago or something. And this was the, the result that I created. Right. And this is the result from uh, Amir Oshin Sajadi, who did a really good job on the body and the wings. But there's a lot of things missing, right? So when they see this, they're going to be like, oh, he followed Abe's tutorial. Like, he probably even includes this in the comments. So when they look at my tutorial, if you're a recruiter, if you want to get someone that is doing a demon, 
Who are you gonna call? Are you gonna call this guy right here, Amir Hossein, right now? Or are you gonna call me, who was the one that did the tutorial? And I'm not only talking about me. Like, there's tutorials by Grassetti, tutorials by Pablo, tutorials by, uh, um, I don't know, like a lot of other people out there. So they're usually, when you post a tutorial piece, they're usually going to go to the people that, or to the person who did the tutorial because he is the guy that like shared the information with everyone else. So it's not bad to share your tutorial pieces. Just be aware that there's a lot of other people, a lot of other people that are also going to be sharing your stuff. Uh, Dilthos says uh, Marmoset makes lightning so much easier. It, it, it makes it. Yeah, I would say it makes it a little bit easier. You can get the same result with any software, like I've done renders with Maya, Arnold, uh, RenderMan, Redshift, Octane, Unreal, Unity. Like, I've done it. It's, it's more about, like, understanding how it works, right? But yeah, uh, about the, the tutorial piece, you can just be aware that it's like the fan art things. Like, people are going to be seeing your stuff and they're going to like, oh, he followed Ape's tutorial or he follows whoever's tutorial, okay? So just uh, careful there. So Pradeep, we're looking at Pradeep's. So yeah, I mean, these two are really cool pieces. My advice, keep going. This is really good, like, lightning information. So just do more environments. Um, exterior, as I told you, it's about controlling light so you get a little bit more, more contrast in certain areas because right now everything looks very well lit. We don't see any depth. That's another thing. You can add a little bit of focal depth so that things very far away get a little bit more blurry. That could also add a little bit more realism to the whole thing. Let's go with the next one. Says, hey, Abe, I'm Tyler. Done a small amount of work in the industry already, but currently job hunting. Mainly looking to be a character artist, but open to any modeling texturing role. Most of the stuff I have right now is the stuff from courses or older outdated work. Note that the first piece is a placeholder for some work that is still under NDA that I'm only allowed to show to recruiters at that moment. I'll, re I'll be replacing it with the actual work in the near future once the game launches. Thanks. Okay, cool. So yeah, again, as, as I just said, uh, Tyler, he has uh, four pieces of uh, my tutorials. This was the Freya tutorial, the Deeper tutorial, the Soldier tutorial, and the Thyros tutorial, which is great because I can really see the, the improvement from Freya to, to Thyros. This tutorial looks really, really cool. Actually, he showed me um, he showed me these results not too long ago through Discord, I believe. And uh, it's a really good one. It's a really, really good one. We got the Marmoset Bureau right there. That's the concept. The concept is actually not by me. It's by Xfox. Um, I bought the concept from him. But that's one that's pretty, pretty cool. So Kaliana looks good. Cartoon. But there's a lot of games nowadays like Clash of Clans and things like that. And then we got uh, Kaidro. But you say this is a placeholder. So yeah, hopefully you can share some more of this stuff. My advice for you, my friend, it's very simple. You already, and you're you're telling me that you already worked in the industry, uh, at least in, in this project or in a couple projects. So you need to do your own characters and show me your own characters, either your own design, you can use maybe AI or something to create a design, or just go online, ask a friend who's a concept artist to allow you to use one of their designs and um, and do them. Because again, these four are tutorials. And the problem with tutorials is that tutorials only tell me that we that you know how to um, to do stuff. Uh, Praveen says, where we can find concepts for a project. So the three that I just mentioned, you can create them your own, yourself. AI is a good tool to do it. I know there's opinions about AI, but I mean, as long as it's just uh, like a non-profit work, I feel like it's a sort of like gray area. So I don't, I'm not against that. Um, ArtStation, DeviantArt, as, as Sarn says, Pinterest is really good as well. Let me see if I can get you some examples. I guess my Pinterest has a lot of anatomy references and there's a lot of like nude models. So I don't want to get any issues right here. There we go. So I don't know, let's say I want to do like a dwarf. So dwarf character concept. I know I always will go to fantasy, but if you go here to DeviantArt, you're gonna find a lot of concepts. My advice, and and this you can find on the um, you can find on the how to pick a project uh, video in YouTube in my YouTube channel. Always look for clear concepts, clean concepts. You don't wanna you don't wanna pick a concept that is very like dark or moody, and there's like things that are not easy to understand. So even something like this, like a very simple concept. I know it's not the most exciting thing, but just to show that you know how to do a character, props, hair, and all those things, this could be perfectly, perfectly good. My advice, message the artist. Like literally go here. This is Adele scene so could be like, hey, Adele, I found your concept. I love it. I would like to make a 3D version of it. Would you be okay? And you can even say, hey, it's going to be for portfolio. It's not from profit or anything. And more often than not, they're going to be like, sure, go for it. And for instance, I can see that she has some other amazing concepts here as well. So just 
send them a message. Sometimes they won't even answer. Just do the element. And the worst thing that had happened, it had only, it has only happened to me twice. And it didn't happen to me. It happened to some of my students. They picked the concept. They did the 3D job. They uploaded. They credited the artist. And then the artist messaged them and told them, please take it down. If that happens, well, it sucks. It doesn't mean that you can't show that concept anymore. You can show them to recruiters as a sort of like personal private concept, but you might not be able to, to showcase to anyone else on the on the internet. Again, it, it has in my 10 years of experience as, as a teacher, it has only happened to me twice. And, um, and to be honest, I'm not sure why. Like, it, it really doesn't hurt anyone. It actually helps the artists as well to get their name out there. So yeah, Pinterest is a, it's a great way to, to get some uh, concepts as well. So yeah, that would be my advice for you, Tyler. Do a female character and a male character of your own creation, like not following any tutorial and just uh, going from there. Uh, Black Ops says, I have been messaging people, no response, but you're right, Abe, we should tell the concept. Yeah, just, just, just tell them. If they don't respond, hey, I mean, you did what you could, you upload, you credit them, and then if you get a, a message, you could be like, oh, sorry, I messaged you, I didn't get any response, this is just for my portfolio, I'm not getting any money out of the Fed, but if you want me, I'll take it down, and you just take it down. Like, it's not like you're gonna get sued and uh, and uh, lose all your money or anything, so so don't worry about that. Even even for um for like copyrighted material, like if you do like for Batman, Superman, Mario Brothers and stuff like that, there's usually this fan art is always this great area where as long as it's non-commercial, companies technically should tell you or send you a cease and desist, but it hurts their image more to do that. That's why they allowed it to exist because it's free promotions for them as well. So again, I'm not a lawyer, but it's usually been my experience so far. Let's now go with a Mehmet Altu from um Turkey. Turkey. Nice. So I see some good pieces and some questionable pieces. He also was part of our weapon design contest, which was really cool. I've already talked to him about the things to improve on this piece, which is to add more subdivisions. You don't need to go this low poly for your element. You can definitely keep it a little bit higher. I really like this cannon. It's a simple one, but it's a cool one. My advice is do a full scene with this sort of art style. Again, similar to what, with, uh, to what I did with the little pirate island for the Maya course. Doing something like that shows a more complete project than just like isolated props like this you already have a chest you already have a sword you already have the cannon so just keep working on the full scene uh this one right here i would definitely take it out i love rick and morty i love the show it's a very cool show this is another very cool model and it's just gonna hurt your um your what's the word your portfolio more than it's gonna help you so if you want to follow this sort of like stylized cartoon thing fine but do a whole like set, like a lot of pieces, a little world with all of this uh, environments and things. I know it's a lot of work. It's going to take you several days, several weeks, maybe. But when you do that, you're going to be able to have a really, really nice and clean piece. Let's see. Fernando Thompson says, hello, Abe. I know my recent work has improved a bit, but I still have a long way to go if I'm to reach my goal and actually become a good 3D artist. Let's take a look. Okay, cool. I Yeah, I think I've seen your stuff as well before. We talked about taking some of this stuff out. Maybe, or maybe I wasn't clear enough last time, but I see some pieces that are not supposed to be here. Not, it's not that they're not supposed to be here. It's just that they're not really helping you anything. So, for instance, the donut. Everyone and their mothers who are learning Blender have done the donut. It's fun to have it here, but it's not something that's portfolio like worth. It's just an exercise to learn Blender, right? Um, this one's fine. This one's incomplete, so so I would take it out. That's the mighty donut. I don't. I, I'm not even sure if I have my donut somewhere. I'll, I'll probably look for it. There we go. The, this cult is it's better. It's a little bit too saturated in the colors, but I like the 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 model. I would definitely need to see a wireframe. There you go. We have the wireframe. It's a little bit low poly. You can definitely go a little bit higher. Careful with the topology flow right here. That's not the best topology flow. Um, it's always important. Yeah. Your courses are very um, poor, affordable. I'm thinking about purchasing three of them. Oh, thank you, man. I, I think I think Udemy has a sale right now where if you buy two courses, you get the third free. So you might be able to get the, the three under my brand. The, that, that's the thing. I, I mean, I've talked about this before, but I, I started this new brand a couple of months ago. And um, the only courses I'm actually getting any sort of like uh, revenue from are the new ones. So the the intro to maya course the the weapon of legends or the triple a weapon for games and the demon course all of the other ones thyros and uh and the demon one that i showed before i mean you can still get them i'm not gonna tell you they're bad they're actually really good but i'm not getting any revenue from them anymore unfortunately i never I'm, I, it's a long story i'll tell it later <laughs> 
So yeah, uh, for you, my friend, Fernando, there are a lot of pieces here that I would just take out and just keep the ones that are the best. Like for instance, this one right here, it's not great. It's not a, it, it's an interesting design, but I don't love it. So I would probably not use it to be honest. So yeah, it, it's just about like cleaning. And if you want to be, uh, I say, I'm not sure exactly what kind of artist you want to be character or prop artist. For me, it seems like a prop artist, a car is always a good, uh, like a uh, thing, a little bit of environment pieces, like a, like a door capsules, sci-fi things, crates, that kind of stuff. It's always, it's always a good idea. Yeah, we definitely need to add, like, um, I'm, I'm gonna add, um, I think it would be a good idea, Sarn, to add another, maybe, maybe like another uh, channel for completed renders. Uh, someone was showing me their, their Maya work uh, yesterday and it was looking very nice. So maybe something like that. And and if you complete a course, you get like a special batch or something. Yeah, honestly, yeah, I like that. Honestly, your Axe Forger, that's cool, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Evil Fry. And yeah, my... These first three courses that I just uh, finished are meant to be beginner level courses, but the next one's going to be a little bit more intermediate. We're going to go Marvelous, ZBrush, Maya, Substance with some more advanced techniques. But I wanted to make sure that I had this like introduction covered so that if someone gets the, the intermediate or advanced courses and they feel like they need a little bit more like foundations, they can go back to this ones and check them out. Bruno Enrique Perez from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Nice. Yeah, look at this. This is what I meant. Like, these sort are of the scenes, these sort are of like dioramas. They're very cool because they show a lot of skills that you need as an artist. Composition, light, plants, uh, textures, particles, like a little bit of everything. And this one looks very, very nice. Very, very nice. I like this one. Maybe the rock is a little bit too realistic for this kind of stuff. I would probably change the texture to something a little bit more stylized, more cartoony. But everything else looks very nice, Bruno. This one's good. High poly stuff. I actually prefer this render first. I would usually use like a clean render first. It's not bad, this one, but I, I really like this one more. And uh, yeah, there you go. That's the topology. Is this for games? It does look for games. If it is for games, include always include the amount of triangles so we can get an idea of how dense or not the, the element is. That one's good. So some people were asking, what should we do? We want to do props, this sort of stuff. This sort of stuff is very important because you're always going to be doing that sort of stuff on, on elms. Grenades also. This one's great. The light here is a little bit too much. Uh, is this Marmoset? Yeah, it's Marmoset. But the optimization is great. I think this is from a tutorial though, right? Uh, didn't you do something similar, Sarn, a couple of months ago? A couple of weeks ago? And you were doing like bakes and things and, uh, in Marmoset as well. Kind of reminds me of the one you did. Yeah, which is fine because again, the render looks very nice. This one looks really nice. BB-8. Nice. Oh, that's a very low poly element. That's great, man. Because right here, it doesn't look as low poly, to be honest. And then, like, it's really low poly. Great. Great optimization. For this one, what I would like to see is the high poly. Did you get the high poly? Or did you just download the high poly and... Uh, says that you made the, the thing in Maya, which is fine. But I would like to see the high poly as well. To see how you handle the topology of, of all of those elements. And finally, this helmet and armor prop. Yeah, this one's good. Careful with the resolution. Um, where are you rendering? Careful with the resolution on your HDRI. Because you can see that we're getting this faceted look. You can change that so that the reflection is a lot cleaner from the HDRI. It's a little bit dark. It's very dense. Like, way too dense. This is a little bit more manageable. But this is way too dense way 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 too dense so careful there because it's not gonna be like game ready i would optimize this one it's a good it's a cool design it's a cool process but i would definitely optimize it because it's way way too much cool so that was bruno let's go with apg avishak puri goswami oh, was funny uh hey Abe, i made some changes to my portfolio i would love to hear your precious feedback you are the best thank you man how ah, i don't remember your portfolio i'm gonna be honest but this looks good. This looks better. I do remember this Mantis, I think. Yeah, this looks better. And it looks better because it looks a little bit cleaner, right? Like, we don't seeing, we're not seeing too many things. So... So, yeah. 
Yeah, I, I guess my, my best advice is, again, get rid of this background. So you don't need those backgrounds. I actually prefer, like, a clean render like this. Seeing the textures in the wireframe is great. But these backgrounds, they just look... They just make everything look very fake. So it's better to do a sort of, like, studio light. Now, this one's very optimized, very low poly for, like, a mobile game or something. And again, these backgrounds, man, they're, they're killing you. The grass and these things, you don't need that. If you're doing this gate, this wall, that's all I want to see. I just want to see the wall presented in a nice way. And that's because if you add a bad background and a bad foreground, it's just going to hurt you more than you need. Let's see. Question about the HDRIs. All of mine are one case. As I thought they're just light information, but I really need... Yeah. Yeah, it's not just light information, it's also reflection information. So if you're only going to use it for the light, 1K is fine, because it's just going to give you a general light. But if you're going to see the reflection of the HDRI in glass or in metals, you do want to push it to like 4K at least. Exactly. Roma is... <laughs> We're in the same page, Roma. <laughs> in the exact same page. If you just want the light, 1K is enough. If you want reflections, which metal pieces usually have, glass pieces usually have, you definitely need to increase the, re increase the resolution. Uh, this one's cool. I like this one. Again, I like this glow. Eh, don't need it. Like, this looks way cleaner. I'd rather see a full render of this weapon right here than this, like, glow. And I understand why we do that. And I I'm going to show you my portfolio. So I did that back in the day. Like, this is one of my favorite pieces when I was... Uh, I'm not sure if this was already... Yeah, it was intro to Seabrush at Norman. So it was a lot of compositing, but I did try to make the whole environment fit a little bit better with the lights and everything. But I still see it as like, yeah, like there's a little bit too much. Like maybe just the character would have been enough. Um, and then I had another one, which was it? This one right here. Right? So that environment on the back, maybe just like a, like a simple effect would have been more than enough. This was Marmoset, I think. Nine years ago. Wow. It's a long time. So, yeah. And then I learned my lesson because a teacher told me, it's like, you don't need the background. And the next pieces, as you see here, this was like another Seabrush class. Uh, the next pieces, it was just like the without the background. And once I learned how to incorporate proper backgrounds, you can start incorporating proper backgrounds. So on this one, for instance, this is an actual HDRI, 4K textures, the whole C and everything. This is a presentation I did a couple of years ago. This was a bad render. Actually, I should take that one out. But this one's a little bit closer to what I was looking for, like a more cinematic shot. So always, always think about whether the background and the foreground is going to add to your stuff or is going to remove from your stuff but you can see this one that it's not helping that thing right there like all that stretchiness it just looks bad like like poorly presented right uh, also no need to <laughs> no need to include your art station again over there be careful to really curate your your portfolio my friends and we got the two last ones. We got Adam J says, hello, I just finished my boat. Can you give me some more? Oh, yeah, Adam was Adam created. <laughs> We're almost going to finish the the uh, uh, this one as, as we did before. Yeah, let's take a look. There you go. Yeah, this looks nicer. We got the little sign, the trash cans, the mop. Yeah, yeah, way, way better. Really nice. I do think things are a little bit too glossy. I would just reduce the glossiness a little bit, but that's just per personal preference. Uh, at this point, those kind of like uh, like feedback things that you're gonna be getting, it's just gonna be like neat, picky things. It's, it's it's something that in production you're gonna be adjusting. Like the director's gonna comment, they're gonna be like, "Hey, make it glossier, make it more matte, change this, change that." But you already have all of the things like necessary. Yeah, this is great, man. This is great. This is the reference. Oh, nice. Yeah, I love it. I would probably just add a little bit more damage. And it's actually very clean. But that's just my personal preferences. Do not see that. <laughs> yeah, this looks good. Can we go inside? Oh, that's very cool. Yeah, this is amazing, man. This is a great portfolio piece. Congratulations. Great, great portfolio piece. Okay, just just for the... Are you, are you here in the chat, man? Adam? Hopefully you are, because I want you, if you're in the chat, please tell the people how long, roughly, in hours, did it take you to do the whole thing? Like, how many hours did you invest in this project? It says it was 20 days, but how many hours per day? I just want to get a, a, a rough estimate. Just a rough, rough estimate. Six to ten hours a day. Let's say eight, just to, to round things up. So that's 20 days times 8 hours, 160 hours. 
See, guys, like you cannot. It, it's very difficult to have a good portfolio piece in 10 hours, in 20 hours, in 30 hours. Not even my tutorials that I try to, to make as, as, as intense and as fast as possible. I know if I, I had if I had spent even more hours, the result would have been even better. For instance, Thyros, which is one of my favorite uh, characters, that one took me, I think the tutorial is like 50 hours long or 40 hours long. I would easily gone like 200 hours for that character. And I know that the result would have been like a lot, lot better. So the more time you spend, the better it's going to be. But you need to like put in the time. You need to commit and really do the work. Cool. We're going to finish today with a Nanny Curse Son from Montreal, Canada. Uh, we don't get any message. It says right here, I'm a 3D artist. I'm always trying to improve on my skill and to create professional work. Um, I wish to create quality 3D characters for AAA games for the industry. Okay, so character artists. Let's take a look. Oh, that's a great concept, man. I do feel like we're not there yet in regards to like anatomy. You can see that there's anatomy there missing, but that concept is really cool. I recommend sticking to this concept, like keep it. And then a couple of years from now, do another pass at it. And you're going to be like, it's going to be an amazing concept. Very cool concept. But yeah, textures are very noisy. The density is way too much. Anatomy is hurting us a little bit. I saw someone writing on the uh, portfolio review. If you want to submit, submit, my friend. <laughs> I'm not I'm not stopping if, if there's more portfolios, but this is the last one that I see. So if someone's missing portfolio review, go to the Discord and um, and uh, upload right there. Uh, Black Ops is any card. Oh, nice, nice. Okay, yeah. So this one, my friend, I feel like we definitely need to improve on the on the anatomy, especially. It's a stylized character. It's very bulky. If you haven't checked the stylized uh, demon course, that might be a good one because it's also very bulky. And I explained how we can exaggerate those uh, those elements. Yeah, same thing here. This one's, I, I guess, supposed to be a little bit more realistic. I like the fact that you you try doing the the action stuff. It seems like action for for hair cards, but we definitely need to improve on some of the assets because right now the render is also not helping. And look at the fingers. The fingers usually have this puffy area on the fingers and the hard part on the bones on the top. So we need to to incorporate that into the decisions. You also participated in the weapon challenge. Nice. Yeah, on this one, I, I think I uh, one of the feedbacks that I gave you was that the stock on the back needs to be a little bit wider, so that it actually works as a stock. It's cool. May I ask you, Neniker or Black Ops, uh, how long have you been doing 3D? Like, how, how, how long have you been learning about 3D? This one's cool. This one's a lot cleaner. The render's a lot cleaner as well. I like this one. To 2021. Okay, so you started in 2021. That's good. So right now you have about a little bit over two years. This is the point in your 3D career, roughly, where you should start focusing on quality. Okay. So after two years, which is where you normally learn all of the tools, all of the softwares, all of the pipelines. Now is where you are, are going to be like, okay, I'm going to do a character, or I'm going to do whatever, uh, like environment or something, and I'm going to spend a lot of time on it. Like we just saw with uh, with our friend right here with uh adam who said he spent 160 hours on the project like you need to to really polish things so i can see this like garden and you have a lot of really cool assets but then the presentation render wise we need to improve the light to, to like make it a little bit more more juicy okay now another thing that i would recommend my friend is I, I need you to make a decision in the next... It doesn't have to be right now, but I need you to... Um, 18 months. There you go, man. Thank you. Um, you need to decide. Do you want to be a character artist or do you want to be a, an environment artist? That's Those are like the two main like areas. If you go into environments, it can be vehicles, it can be props, it can be a lot of things. But the skills that you're going to... Like the quality skills, the sort of like, like uh, expertise that you need to develop for each of these two particular lines will really change how you should be focusing your attention. So if you want to be doing characters, you need to improve on an enemy, you need to improve on proportions, you need to improve on shaders, like skin shaders and things like that. If you want to be an environment artist, I need to see more environment art right here. I need to see more tileable textures, more uh, trim sheets, more assets, and things like that. Make sure, I'm not sure if you're a student uh, still or if you're already uh, freelancing. It seems like you're already freelancing. So if if you don't have a work right now or you have a little bit more time, try to, to focus on one of those things. Do I want to be a character artist or do I want to be a, an environment artist? And once you define that, try to do at least one piece every two weeks or every three weeks. 
with a lot of time in, like it's spent on it at least as you saw it's at least 50 hours i would say a, a good portfolio piece should be should be at least like 50 hours if you spend 50 hours on a piece it should be portfolio ready if you spend more time because you can afford it go for it and it's going to be an even more amazing piece okay that would be my my advice for you uh my friend nanny Kerr. and now let's go with um we got ben lod says hello everyone my latest personal project i made this last month during my spare time and the best partner for a jedi the robot bd1 yeah this is good man the modeling looks good very clean modeling do we have a wireframe is the question hard surface is always very fun yeah there we go this is of course not for games this would be for like a cinematic or something it's a subdivision modeling very clean i i applaud the topology right here Hats off to you, man, because this is very clean to budget. All of this, like, loops that you have right here, they're not easy to find. Um, and I know this is not, like, a automatic grid topology. It's, like, hand-drawn, probably. So, congratulations on this one right here. My best advice for this piece would be to do proper UVs and UDIM textures. Because right now, I think you're only using, like, basic materials, probably from Arnold. Yeah, you're using Maya. So this is great, but we definitely need to 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 add like proper materials and a, and a nicer render because right now the render seems like a very flat render. I'm I'm not seeing like an HDR again. Look at the harsh shadows. Make sure to check our video in in today's uh, YouTube uh, upload for for better renders. Just a three point light setup. That's all you need, and it's gonna look even better, like even nicer. And yeah, proper UVs and UDIM textures on this guy, and poof, you're gonna have a a killer piece right here. Even though it's a fan art, it's a really clean fan art. And I, I'm not sure if I've seen your stuff before. I kind of do remember this one right here. Great thing right here. Again, even though this is just like a work in progress, if you do proper textures and UVs, that could also be like a like a nice portrait. What's this? Script. Oh, you script? Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's pretty cool, man. I have to take a look. Is this available? Ah, just for presenting. Oh, man, this is very cool. Wow. It's very, very fancy. Cool. Yeah. So this one, man, just UDIM textures better uh a better render and it's going to be an amazing portfolio piece is it too density for what for games yeah it's definitely dense but for uh for film it's perfectly fine like for a cinematic it's perfectly fine i told you guys like a couple of years ago do you guys remember the shang chi movie movie there was a making off of this movie and there was a shot where they are in the in this scaffolding in like hong kong or something this one this scene right here so there's a making of. I'm, I'm gonna see if I can find it and then post it in the in the Discord channel. But they were doing a, a a making of, and and I saw the density that each of these bamboos had. It was ridiculous. It was like I don't know, like 50k triangles just per bamboo, and the scaffolding was going all the way to the street. So the amount of polygons that were on the film is just like ridiculous. Um, why don't just use the shader one on the um, the shader? It, it can be used, however for such an intricate piece like this one i feel like having all of this topology is, is fine like it's it's totally totally worth it it might get a little bit complicated on the texturing side of things like substance might struggle a little bit so you might need to to texture this like in in separate pieces but if you do it's more materials and you just keep everything consistent you're gonna have a great result cool so yeah that's it my friends we're done with this, we finish our um, our October portfolio review. We're going to have another portfolio review next month in November. So I'm going to be closing the October submission in the in the Discord channel and opening the new one very, very soon. If you want to submit for the next month, it's going to be open. It's going to be available for, for everyone. We're also going to be, of course, uploading these things into, um, into our main YouTube channel. And we're growing. We're growing very quickly and very nicely. It's been an amazing three months or four months so far. If you want to keep supporting the channel, following here, uh, subscribing, of course, here to Twitch or checking out any of our premium courses is the best way to support us and allow me to keep doing this, which I love, which is to teach you and share with you as much information as possible about the 3d world thank you very much my friends i'm gonna be seeing you very very soon and i'll keep you updated with the event that i'm gonna be participating in the next couple of months so yeah that's it sarn thank you for being here as well for helping with the whole community and thanks everyone for submitting your stuff it's been an honor seeing all of these things and helping you out in your 3d journey i will be seeing you back on the next video Bye bye